I had a good week off, off, I guess, watching GDQ. Uh, I definitely, I, there were, having Brian Otto on for the final part of that last show was definitely a blessing in disguise because I learned about a lot of runs uh, that he knew about on the schedule that were FPSs that I didn't necessarily know about. Like, Shoot Mania Storm, that was definitely when the sleeper hits. Um, so, encourage y'all to check that out if you can. But, today, much different day. Uh these are two games that when you play them for the first time, or I guess when you play them normally, uh, require a lot of strategic thinking. Uh, you have to be placed in a certain place. You have to level up your characters correctly. And it's, I, I've played both of these games and it's a particular joy that I have watching them get just absolutely just shredded in half. Uh, so without further ado, here is Sanjan with Mass Effect 1. Sanjan, take it away. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Sanjan. I'll be uh, running Mass Effect 1 any percent. So FYI, this is the original version and not the legendary edition. So with me on my virtual couch is Corbin May, who will Hi. be commentating for my run. I'm Corbin May. I don't actually run this game, but I like the Mako in Mass Effect 1 enough that Sanjan lets me be on all of her couches. And so now you're stuck with me. Yep, here we are in this uh in this particular category we stand the Mako, so you're gonna see a lot of really fun Mako tricks and fun combat, so you might see my Shepherd here, and I've already loaded a save, so the time starts whenever Shepherd starts moving. So without further ado, uh let's start out. So I'll give a countdown to zero, so five, four, three, two, one. Zero. So I'm going to start the run by chucking a grenade into Normandy because it is totally safe. So what throwing a, So we want to throw grenades in this because it's going to put us in combat. And when you'll notice uh, when I'm in combat, I'm uh, pretty much running because the run speed is just generally really slow without being in combat. Oh, you're so good at mashing through these. Yep, so if you're wondering why... I'm mashing really fast through these cutscenes. It's because I have a free scroll wheel mouse and I have a bound to a uh, mouse scroll wheel up. So the dialogue will be extremely fast. But also please do excuse me, my coughing since uh, I have uh, some s medical stuff, but it'll be okay. But yeah, for the first like 20 minutes or so, there's gonna be lots of cutscenes. So I guess I'll explain a little bit about the plot of this. So we're we're playing as Commander Shepard. We'll be uh, what we call Male Shepard Sheplu, kind of, not really, but so we're an N7 officer, N7 uh, operative, pretty much working with uh, Anderson and on the Normandy, investigating some shady stuff that happened on this planet called Eden Prime. It's the future, by the way. If that wasn't clear, it, it is um, 2183, to be precise. We will do our best job to not spoil Mass Effect 2 and 3. We will fully spoil Mass Effect 1. So if you haven't played Mass Effect 1, you've had 14 years to do it. Um, so get on that. But uh, yeah, we're going to have to talk. We're, we're going to unfortunately have to talk about the plot of Mass Effect 1 to explain what's going on in Mass Effect 1. Um, so... If you haven't played Mass Effect 1 in a while, you might have forgot there's actually a cutscene before this that we skipped by loading a save, and it's because it's just a long cutscene, and that's boring or really annoying when you have to when you're redoing or doing attempts. So movement starts in the first input after that cutscene instead. Yeah, so <laughs> there's gonna be quite a few cutscenes in the beginning here, but you, now we're gonna investigate uh and recover a beacon that we saw on uh we're trying to find on Eden Prime. This is where we get our first two squad members, too. Uh, particularly, we get our best squad member, Jenkins. Jenkins, best boy. So I'm going to start by binding a warp and throw. And I'm going to smack this uh, little brain blob thingy major, or what do you call it, to get into combat here. So you notice I full so when it comes to sprint, you actually don't want to like run entirely all at once. You kinda of want to stagger your sprint so that you gain as much of it as possible. Cause you're only gonna when you like shoot things and you're out of combat or like throwing a grenade, you're only in combat for a certain amount of time. So 
and there's time for like your stamina to recover because if your stamina fully depletes, then you can't run for a long time. So we got our first little fight here. Uh, RP so Jenkins. Jenkins is dead. That's bad RNG. Yeah. So we're gonna do warp here, and I'm gonna immediately do a level up. I'm gonna learn uh, marksman and singularity. So singularity is a uh, our bonus skill that we learn. It's normally only for adepts, but it's since really uh, we have a guys. completed uh, achievements file, which is allowed in this category, we have a uh, we get to learn that as our bonus skill. So I'm gonna let uh, May explain this part because yeah, so it is a little precise. The like. The largest glitch, like one of the largest glitches that's used in this run is the fact that if you um, are crouched and then save uh, and then load, um, when you load back in the game, you're no longer crouched. And so that allows you to like get up on top. Uh, and that like if the game doesn't know where to put you, it'll like kind of like warp you up. And so you can use that to get to places you shouldn't be able to go. That trick right there where you climb up the wall over there is very precise. Uh, Sanya was teaching me this game a little while ago, and that took me like five minutes to get once. It's it's very tricky, um, but you pretty much just have to like get up on that wall in the spots that lets you move, and then you kind of like wiggle your way into the right spot and then run up while you can. Uh, Sanjan's also trying to stay in combat here, um, ideally because again you want to stay in combat as long as you can in order to uh, keep that run speed. If you fall out of combat, uh, you could throw another grenade, but we need our grenades, so uh, she's also going to loot that. We're going to need a little bit of money later on, um, so we're looting stuff that's on the way. So if we, by doing that clip, we skip a whole entire segment of uh, cutscenes where we get Ashley, but don't worry, Ashley will be, will be back soon. And so as you see, eventually, we're supposed to recruit another squad member before, but not, but for this part, we only have Kaden and uh, as our squad mate for now, so I'm gonna shoot this get the shore here. Spark and we actually weird. Yeah, because we actually need to kill the rest of the enemies here, but they haven't spawned yet. Because they glitched it. Also, rest in peace Nihilus. Yeah, you have to do that load in order to um uh get the enemies to spawn. And then here is like you can die here, but for whatever reason, um when you're low in this part, the game like gives you a ton of damage reduction. Cause I guess because it's pretty early on, they don't want you to like fail super hard here, but um, it's still pretty scary. Yeah, this there, you could even though we're playing on casual mode, you can actually very easily die because you're kind of like a glass cannon, and you're not only under leveled but pretty under geared for this for like the entire game. Like literally, only Shepard will get a weapon, and all of your squad mates are pretty much there to be a cannon fodder or be there to use abilities. Um, so now we have to go dismantle a bunch of, or disarm a bunch of bombs. Uh, essentially here it's about putting your squad mates in the right spot so that they take all the fire away from you and then you can just dismantle the bombs peacefully. Um, not a ton. Um, yeah, there's not a more about just knowing where to go. Say. Yeah. You have to, for these, you have to hold E. I think in, L in Legendary Edition, you don't need to hold the action button, thankful. Really? Because yeah. even in Mass Effect 3, you have to keep holding the button. I've played a ton of Mass Effect 3 multiplayer and I in, in the last year, and uh, you and Pac still need to hold down the button. Oh, we ordered Kaden. <laughs> we ordered Kaden there so that he can try to take care of enemies as much as possible. He'll be a really useful squad mate because he has abilities. He's, uh, he's basically kind of like the biotic kind of Jedi-like person of the group and we, and in the speedrun, we like biotic people, so... The biotics are really, really, really strong. Yeah, they're incredibly strong in this game. We play as a Vanguard, even though um, Vanguard is way less cool in 1 than it became in 2 and 3. Because it doesn't have its signature 2 and 3 ability. But uh, it's still really, really freaking good in 1. Yeah, so we use Vanguard because we want access to useful biotics, but we also want access to... Uh, we also want access to marksmen because uh, pixel or uh, not pixels, uh, pistols are the most busted uh, weapon yeah, they're because really of good. marksmen. They are incredibly good. It's so important we'll to kill. Using... Oops, sorry. Well, we'll be using pistols for pretty much the entire game. We we are not shotgun gamers. Also, this scene is extra funny as male chef because. Roger Normandy. 
They're supposed to be another character in this cutscene, but you're not going to see them, so... It looks like Shepard and Caden are on some uh, red sand, but you know. There's a lot of things that happen in the speed in the speed run. I can't blame them. So yeah, Shepard's about to get a vision from I forgot what it's called. Is it a beacon, beacon or is it just yeah. A beacon? yeah. So he's gonna be on uh, quite a trip. Yeah, so you see Caden holding like thin air, and you saw Shepard kind of like trying to throw up thin air. So it's it's extremely funny. Um. There's actually a little cutscene before this that got uh, skipped by activating the beacon fast enough after killing the Geth. Yeah, so you'll notice earlier, like, I was able to activate it really early because I killed the, it, the beacon depends on, like, how many enemies you kill, so... Or, like, when enemies are all dead, so... You have a little bit of cutscenes now. Um, if For those of you just joining us... Oh, yeah, this is the matriarch. Saren's about to be, like... I'm so mad my run died. Uh This is it. this is all of us when we um when we lose our runs. You'll I see think he second. I think he got a really bad Latias again. I mean I can't blame yeah. him. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. That's how yeah. the Reaper War started. It. When you don't get uh, the one you want. Uh minus special attack. Um, uh Adamant Nature, no. Both of, both of us are also Pokemon runners, so you're gonna have to deal with some of those jokes. Um, so this is the original game. This is not the Legendary Edition. For those of you wondering in chat, the Legendary Edition is actually very different than this speedrun because they rebalanced a lot of stuff and they fixed some stuff. Yeah, the so, in Mass Effect LE, assault rifles are pretty much the weapon to go. In original, pistols are the weapon to go because because of marksmen. But in the LE, assault. The overkill ability of the assault rifle is just way overpowered. The beacon exploded. The system over and yeah, there's Ashley. There's the squad mate we were supposed to recruit on uh, Eden Prime, and now she's magically here. Yeah. Don't worry, you'll still get your uh, your full dose of space racism from Ashley. She's still here. I'll be in the mess if you need me. We're yeah. Sounds like it. Yeah, so we've got a. <laughs> After this, we got another minute of, of fun cutscenes to go through. <laughs> Excuse nice me. Nice leisurely jog through the we were, um, through the through the Normandy up to the galaxy map. I think we have to talk to you. Um, why am I blanking on his name? Oh no, we talked to Joker here. We talked to Joker. Yeah. We talked yeah. to Joker here, and there's gonna be another minute cutscene. But you know yeah. I was thinking Norman, Normandy. That's why Saren's mad. Cause Ooh. probably died to Norman in uh Ooh. again. I mean Ooh. Ugh. You all get you all get you all get so much Alpha Sapphire. Or Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire jokes here that are funny to only the two of us. Sanja's got a really, really sick run in Omega Ruby in the last week, too. Yeah. Follow Sanjan on Twitter, or Twitch if you're not already following Sanjan underscore, by the way. Also follow Corbinne, because she's an awesome commentator. Stop. You're an awesome person. You're an awesome person. But yeah, this is about that I get to the... talk about. I gotta talk about the Mako so much every time you run this game. Uh, everyone's gonna love the Mako after this. We stand the Mako. In this speed run. Um, Chat's asking, does it matter who you pick to die for the speed run? It's huge spoilers for the end of Mass Effect 1, but uh, we will explain that later on. Yes, but also no? So we'll be, uh... So plot-wise, we kind of want... To... So we kind of found out that Saren was kind of like, you know, doing some weird shady stuff with that beacon that exploded. So now we're trying to go to the council to tell them about our findings. So this is going to be the last of uh, the big cutscene love that we're going to get. There's a lot of like, the Mass Effect 1 is a lot of like uh, humans not knowing things about the galaxy stuff because in the lore, I think it's, it's been like, what, 20 years since First Contact? I don't remember the exact timeline, but like... 23 humans, years, I think. 23, yeah. Humans aren't eight. on the Galactic Council. Council. Humans, uh... 
there there's no human specter yet. Um so now we're just gonna go to the Presidium Citadel Tower. Fun fact about this exact warp point is that my game consistently crashes there. It's super cool. Also say hi to Garrus. Say bye to Garrus. Bye Garrus. We won't be I seeing hope... him again. I'm sorry. Oh, everyone. are we gonna go are we gonna go back the easy way? Oh what? We have to hide in this corner. I hope we don't. Are we gonna crouch in this corner? We're gonna do some uh, very uh you know, just another day on the Citadel type of stuff. We're gonna do Extremely the same thing. Extremely normal stuff. We're gonna go out oh, of hey. bounds. Wee! Oh, that's gotta oh. hurt. We're gonna go on this very leisurely uh run. So So now what happens with the plot is that we have to find some proof that Theron has been doing some shady stuff because the council, of course, doesn't believe us. So now we're off to find some proof, and Shepard knows just where to go. You gotta go talk to Fist. Yeah, so normally, like, that door to Fist is closed, and you have to kind of, like, find some people to help you out, but we're just gonna go directly there. We don't care. This is what happens if you, don't, if you don't calibrate the Citadel right. You just wind up in the void. Yeah, so there's gonna be plenty of uh, being in the void. So we have to actually be careful with our movement here because it's pretty easy to fall off into the eternal void. And I have lost runs to this before. So I'm going to make a save here, crouch. And load our saves to put ourselves back into the nor normal area. And then we're going to beat up Fist. So just a Singularity and Marksman. Very easy fight. And you see why Singularity is such a good move because CC lasts for a good amount of time and it kind of launches them up into the air and makes them really easy to kill. And you'll never see Fist again. Wonderful stuff. So we're going to do another menu here. I'm going to learn Adrenaline Burst, Barrier, and Barrier. Very good uh, ability. Both of them. Because this part's, like, very scary. So essentially the way that you're going to get through it rather than killing everything, which is slow, is, uh... Oh, you're hacking this. Yeah, so I'm going to do this as safety to get more loot because it is a little bit loot-based. All right. Last I time, promise uh... I can do this. Can All right. you... All right, well. Last time, changing this in a marathon, it was like horrible loot luck. Yeah, it should be better now. So this is a pretty sketchy area to run through. But, That's um, why I double barrier there. Yeah, adrenaline, um, adrenaline rush, adrenaline rush, yeah. Let's you, it resets all your cooldowns. So that lets us barrier twice and get through that without having to kill everything. Oh, okay, Kaden. Kaden going in. So now you gotta all kill right. these two assassins. That was. That was pretty that good. That was really good. Uh, and so now. And everyone's favorite. Well, one of everyone's favorites. I'm sure she won't be important later. Where's the shadow broker? Yeah, so we had to go save her because Fist told us uh, about her. So that's what we're doing. So I'm queuing up the uh, throw here because throw will instantly kill the two little ads. And then I'm going to hope that uh, everyone unloads abilities on this assassin here for an instant kill. I guess that's not happening. But it's nice when it happens. Nice grenade. And now we're going to get to one of the hardest sk or, uh, skips in the entire game after this bit right here. Wait, yeah. there's another cutscene, I think. Yeah, so there's going to be a cutscene that place, and then we'll have to do the hard skip, so... Yeah. If I do the skip right, I can save I can save 40 seconds, but usually if I don't get in like a real run, I reset. But since this is a marathon, we're just going to deal with it. I but it is a 45 say, second have, time loss. I have a 100% success rate on this trick. May is just really good at this game. I was really good. So we're just going to walk down the stair skin. And we're going to throw another grenade here to get into combat. So before we have to do this skip, uh, we have to go back to the Citadel and then trigger this cutscene. Because since uh, our cutscene, our quest is kind of a weird spot right now because we skipped a whole bunch of stuff. So we're going to have to play this cutscene. So this, so this cutscene is going to glitch out. And the way to solve it is to save and reload and then... Here comes the hard skip, so I'm going to try yeah, my this best. Is, this is frame perfect. Maybe it's two frames. You have to um, 
talk and open the map Easy. at the exact same time. Yep. First try every time. First try every time. We'll play. Continue to play while the map is open. And then we get to skip watching the cutscene, which saves a bunch of time. Yeah, so... If you, op if you open the map and talk to Anderson at the exact same frame, you get this funny little glitch here, so... And With this, we basically skipped the... The, we skipped a cutscene where everyone's like, congrats, Shepard, on becoming a Spectre. Yeah, Spectres are like the... The idea of a Spectres is they're like the like special black ops of the Citadel Council. Council? I cannot say that word. Um, they do like... The idea is like they have... They're like spies, essentially. They have um, the license to do whatever they need to do to protect the interests of the Council. Uh, and then that way the council has plausible deniability, and it's like a big deal that we're the first one because of our actions on Eden Prime. And because so we're, we're totally gonna... normal people, we're going to get to the Normandy the fancy way because we are allergic to elevators. Just running through the air casually. And then you gotta line yourself up right with this like fountain thing down here. And the goal here is to land on the right spot spot and clip through the Normandy. Yep, so this skips having to go through the elevator, but this also skips recruiting Garrus and Rex, which we actually do not want to recruit Rex because he's actually... He loses, time. He loses quite a bit of time later on. So that's because Garrus and Rex are both very good characters, but they're not good for time. Yep, so that was actually not a bad time, honestly. So now we're off. So now we're pretty much up to the open world stage. Since now, plot wise, the accounts is like, okay, you become a Spectre. You know, we are convinced Gar or Garen, Sar Saren is, uh, you know, up to some shady stuff. So now you got to chase him across the galaxy and find out what he's trying to do with this stuff. So now we, we there's like major plans we have to go to. So now our first ch choice will be Novaria. Because Novaria is not a bad planet to do first, since we we can deal with all the bosses. You can technically do other planets first, but it's going to be much harder because we don't have very much in the way of abilities. Yeah. Uh, Novaria is also the first planet where we're going to have a brand new glitch that gets used all the time. And that is the, uh, the weapon swap glitch, which... What you do is you swap your weapons super fast, and then it lets you skip cutscenes sometimes. I don't really get how it works. So when you swap weapons, it kind of stalls the cutscene from starting since you're, since the animation of the swapping your weapons precedes the, the cutscene starting. So okay, as you see so here, because we just, glitch into the Normandy swap through the entire uh, uh, volume. Yeah, pretty much. That makes sense. That makes sense. So I'm gonna take Caden and Tally here, because Tally's very good against Geth. Yeah, there's a Geth planet. So we're gonna uh, this planet's this also gonna be here to get into combat. This planet's also where we get the best squad member in the game. So get ready for that. Now we're gonna, I'm gonna try to do the swag strats here. So normally, so what I'm doing here is spamming weapon swap. As you see here, to stall a bunch of cutscenes. Oh, I failed it, yeah. I'm not really good at, like... I usually let that cutscene play, but do this part instead. Yeah, it warps you all the way back there, which is annoying. Yeah. It only saves you, like, two seconds if you get it, but... I just tried to do the alternate way. Welcome to Port Hanshed, the galaxy's most respected site for independent... Yeah, but unfortunately, though, we still have to deal with elevators, primarily on Novaria, since... There's no really good way. So most of the out of bounds clips, it's easier when you're going down. But if you're going up, it's very hard. Yeah, if you're not familiar with, if you haven't played the original Mass Effect, it was kind of like I guess infamous when it came out for having extremely long elevator sequences because all the elevators are just uh, essentially like masking loading sections. But um, with newer computers, it's not obviously not really an issue given that this game was out on the PS3. Two, 2008 PS3. Not a system known for its its very good loading times. I have an extra grenade, so I'll chuck it here. Save a little bit of time. Using grenades 
having extra grenades thrown, like for these areas, generally saves you about three to four seconds each. So, but we're gonna get through this the normal standard way. Yep. Of, uh, crouching down next to it. Totally okay, they're blocking the way, but you know what? Shepard doesn't care. He's a specter. Wow, what are these weird robots? I bet they won't be important in the plot of Mass Effect. I wonder what they are, so... I'm gonna wait here a second. Let's have them kill that, uh, flying geth instantly. Those geths are always annoying. I'm gonna hope Kane can probably us take care. Is our most valuable squad member. Well, behind Hello? us now. That guy's... he's... a fool. Yeah, the killing these guys are really annoying. I don't know what Caden and Tally were doing there, but here's our best squad mate ever, the Mako. This is the Mako, another infamous part of Mass Effect 1. Uh, we both here would like to say that the Mako is perfect, and any flaws of the Mako are actually flaws with the person driving the Mako. The exactly. Mako is beautiful, the Mako is lovely, we love the Mako. We we're stand the Mako. Mako. To do a lot of nonsense in this run. Yeah, um, there's actually a very right recent. Now. Yeah, not right now. There's a, actually a very recent change that lets us do the so, something really weird with the Mako, but unfortunately, I did not have enough time to learn it because it actually saves quite a bit of time. But uh, unfortunately, we'll just have to take this this nice leisurely scroll stroll, which is you know a nice little prelude to what. You'll all be seen much later on. And but for now... Kill some of this stuff to get experience. Yeah, I want to hit level 7 before the final boss fight of this planet, so... I just do not understand end. how you are capable of zooming in and continuing to drive like normally. I does not work for my brain. When I zoom in, I just veer off the road and die. Yeah, driving the Mako is an art. So we get this cutscene here with these uh, friendly neighborhood <laughs> armatures that we're totally going to kill. Reed, we're not going to. But, you know, cool cutscene. Too bad Shepard did not ask. Yeah, we don't kill them because they're standing like right over here where I just shot at. Yeah, it's mostly just the, the turrets and a couple of randoms. Yeah, so I... I I guess I won't explain too much of this glitch, because it's better when you see it later on, but... The new glitch that was just discovered just today saves, like, about two, three minutes, and it lets you skip all the way to was one today? of the enemy areas. Yeah, it was literally today. I thought it was yesterday. No, this was literally found today. So shoutouts to, uh, Lufex, one of the fellow glitch hunters, also a Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic glitch hunter and speedrunner. Really cool guy. He pretty much, uh... Is the founder of said glitch, which you'll be seeing later on. Yeah, um, a lot of drama, I guess, in the Mass Effect community literally today um, around the fact of like the crazy stuff that you can do with the Mako that is leading to a uh, board split. But you're still going to see Mako nonsense because that is the run that Sanja knows. Yeah, there is an alternate route we can use, but unfortunately. It's not able to de rest it in time, but you guys get to see Mako fun. Like, who doesn't love the Mako? You guys are gonna love it even more after I love this. I Mako so much. I've been, a, I've like, I've stand the Mako for over a decade now, and I'm not about to stop now. Yeah, so, but fortunately for you all, we're just gonna, you know, ease it up. This is, you know, we don't do any Mako tricks right now. So, this is just literally us, like, driving along, holding W, shooting the, these little cannons here. For this is harder than it looks, by the way. Yeah, it's very easy to kind of like drive off. When Stan like, was teaching me this oh, game, yeah. I'm pretty sure I drove off like three times. So if, you, so if you're if the Mako's tipping down, you can actually spam the boosters to get gain a decent amount of speed. That's a nice little time save there. You can also heal the Mako, but it's horrendously slow. As yeah, it's pretty slow. So we are going to... So this is the end of our, make, of our first make go section after we kill this turret. I'll just skip that turret. I don't need the XP anyways. All right. All right. That's, I've end never end. ended up there before. So 
We have to kill no, all the P15. enemies. Yeah, we have to kill all the enemies in this garage. It's very annoying because these Krogana like to uh, be annoying, and our teammates are not very good. So, yeah, teammates do half the damage that you do, which is like not very much. So, yeah, so that's why we try to prioritize squad mates that have abilities when we bring them on. Enemies everywhere. I'm gonna grab that free stuff. I'm gonna do a quick save here because it's a rare thing to happen, but you can actually soft lock if you had to turn the elevator, so that's why I'll be doing the quick saves in this area because I have lost plenty of runs to these elevators uh just not cooperating with me. So we're gonna shoot right here to get ourselves into combat. And then we're just gonna run past all of these friendly neighborhood geth. Hello, fellows. If you uh, run the uh, wrong way, you actually trigger a uh, cutscene, which I did not know. Yeah. I think it's the cutscene with the little Rachni. Yeah, it's one of the little guys. So, yeah, the... yeah, because these elevators are going up, we can't really go use the clip out of bounds to skip these, but it's not a big deal. And then I'm going to shoot again, start running real quick, and there's going to be these 10 little Rachni here. They look kind of scary. They do a lot of damage up. real fast. Yeah. Ooh. And then another clip. Yep, so uh... we're going to crouch here. So normally, in normal gameplay, you have to kind of like fix this core in order to let you down all the way to the train area, but... Like oh, I said, beautiful this, is just box. this is just another day with Shepard. The Sean our Bra Shepard. Our goal here is to land on the tram to peak 15. Um, and then we get to go to peak 15, but I can do the rest of the level. Yeah, so we have to kind of like walk all the way here. So, yeah. the nice, so the special thing about like clipping out balance in the very is that it spawns us all the way down like to the top. So now we're just like running all the way down directly to the tram. So we're skipping, like, helping the VI out and going through a lot of boring elevators that nobody asks for. So my visual key is that I have to be on the right of that little elevator thing. Oh, uh, it's sunset. And we're instantly on the tram. Easy. So you can actually fall off here. Yeah, it's kind of sketch. Yeah. So that's why I have to be a little careful. And now we're going to Rift Station. This is another part where my game likes to crash. So I'm just manipulating RNG for my squad mates to do good, because this planet, as well as the next planet, likes to troll combat-wise. Uh, what? Did you get a good ammo upgrade? Uh, did I get an ammo upgrade? I believe. Yeah, yeah I got a decent ammo upgrade, but... Yeah, so actually explaining this, so there's there's uh, the upgrade system for your weapon, so I'm kind of hoping for certain weapons as well as like certain ammo to make uh, yes. fights before we get our overpowered weapon much easier. Weapons in all the Mass Effect games have mod slots. Um, this game is a lot, is by far the most RPG-like of the three uh, Mass Effect trilogy games. Um, I know Andromeda exists, it's not part of the trilogy. Don't ratio me in the comment in the chat um well, and general does, does take part in the different galaxies so. yeah um but so so uh two and three are a lot more like straightforward uh third person shooters whereas one has a lot more of the collecting loot and stuff like you, you get a lot of loot in mass effect one uh one also has a different um uh weapons system than two and three in that in two and three you just have standard ammo clips and in mass effect one you have a cooldown heat system so as you shoot you you'll build up heat and if the gun fills up the heat bar fills up all the way you cannot shoot until the heat is reduced which is very bad and we're gonna hack our way to the end of the level here using omni gel instead of doing going around doing it the old-fashioned way um, one of the nice things about Marksman, the ability that we mentioned before, is that it rapidly reduces the cooldown of, or your heat generation. So, and, so you're able to just shoot, like, pretty much non-stop when you have Marksman up. Yeah. Because heat generation is actually, so, instead of ammo in this game, there's a concept of heat generation. 
So when your weapon heat goes all the way up, your weapon overheats and you can't use it for a certain amount of time until it cools down. I said that. Oh. I'll just repeat it for those who just tuned in. Okay, okay, I respect that. So we're gonna loot these here and then I'm gonna do another menu here to learn lift. And also well as advanced throw, and I'm going to hope I had good weapons. I have an edge, that's a good start. Recoil dampener, it's not bad, and Ooh, I like chemical rounds better though. I'm a chemical rounds gamer. So we're gonna do a quick save here, so we're already at the end of Novari pretty much and he's not to try Shepherd. to explain this fight quickly. Um so this fight's like pretty uh tactical. Um there's three sets of there's there's three waves of ads that have to get killed and then you get to fight um uh Benezia directly. Um you ideally don't get uh, see, like locked into a biotic during a cutscene transition because that soft locks you. But at the start oh, of the fight, that's not good. Uh oh. Oh, I have to. Uh, I did not find the... lift. Ooh. At the start of the fight, Sanjin looked a certain way to uh, right before the cutscene started to put the quabits over there to take care of the ads on that side, and then I'm just gonna reload my save. This okay. fight is really bad. I'll just keep it easy. This gives me a good opportunity to explain it in more real time. Yeah. So first try, coming up right here. Sanja's looking to this side and has to get the squad mates over there so that they take care of the ads on that side. Well, she's able to take care of the ads on the other side. Um, the goal here is to pop marksman, kill the uh, first Asari by shooting it down, and blow up the second one with um, by blowing up the canisters. This is a video game, so there's exploding canisters everywhere. It's required by law as we all know in video game development. Um, so yeah, that, yeah, that went way better. And now we're on the second stage where your goal is to try to CC these, sorry, over yeah. here. You, you kill these two. Uh, you you want to CC the, the sorry before it gets off barrier because if it gets off barrier, then it's going to have a ton more health. Yeah, and we don't really have the tools to deal with uh, barriers very quickly. Our squad mates, please kill them. Why is there a skeff here? That's very annoying. So these skeffs spawn can be a little random. And this last part is very easy because we just get geff here and... And this is why we learn Singularity. Goodbye. That's wonderful, Shepard. And uh, so... This is the last part where we face against Venezia directly. I was not meaning that. Oh, Caden did not do the thing. That's okay though. In an ideal world, Caden will just CC her, and then you just burst her down before she gets off barrier. But Caden decided that uh, time loss is cooler and did not do that. There's also a couple ads you can take care of. Yeah, there's these last ads. I actually want to try to throw them because if you throw them out of bounds, they instantly die, so. So that was okay, but it could be better. And now we have to make our first moral choice. Um, in this period, we don't actually get a moral choice. Yeah, because we just... Our moral choice is whatever goes faster. Yeah. Well, yeah. so... Kind of, but yes, but also no for this one, really, right? Yeah, so basically, uh... Just TLDR, Shepard's kind of a jerk. Yeah, cause... we want Renegade points, because essentially you want to go all Paragon, or all Renegade. Um... Because it will matter for the final boss. Uh... The background we pick starts with the Renegade points. It's overall faster. So our Shepard just does a bunch of jerk face stuff the entire time. And so we are going to kill the Rachne Queen. It is a longer cutscene, but it gives us, but it saves time in the long run. Yeah, so it's also much easier to get Renegade points in the speed run than Paragon points because of a certain action we do a little you're bit gonna, later on. You're going to regret this when you um, uh, load this save for Mass Effect 3, though. Yeah. Yep, so, you know, Shepard's a jerk. Bop. So, rip and pepperonis, rack night queen. I love his face during this. He's just like, yeah, I enjoy this. This is good for me. This is totally okay. <laughs> poor, <coughs> poor thing. And died because we want to go fast. Uh, shout out to Mass Effect 2. 
So that's pretty much the end of the planet. So that Venezia fight was okay. I've had much faster, but yeah, as that fight can go really bad really fast, and there's glitches that can happen in a speed run. So I'll explain one of them that can happen. If you get a, if you get CC'd, which is like crowd control, like you get like biotic or you whatever. You saw the first attempt there, where Shepard was just laying on the ground taking a nice little nap. Yeah. So if that happens and the cutscene progress and a cutscene plays. You can't control Shepard and you have to like quit out of the game and reload. So that is obviously really bad. So I am going queuing up a weapon swap skip right here because usually there's a cutscene that plays at the end of this. But we can skip that. So I weapon swap to induce lag as well as a uh, delay the cutscene. And then I'm just going to quick save and load. Now we're going to go to Pharaohs. And we're going to do a lot of things in Pharaohs. And a lot, I mean, only one thing. Um, we're gonna do a- we're gonna skip, like, the entire planet. And then we're gonna do a fight. Pharos is pretty quick. Yeah, Pharos is pretty quick in the speedrun compared to what you saw in Novaria. Yeah, it's also quite hard. Yeah, it's also a, a, a somewhat difficult fight to optimize, especially if you don't have the ideal mods. I have some pretty- <laughs> a pretty nice weapon, as well as a chemical rounds mod, but Ideally, I would have liked the heat sink, but unfortunately, uh, we don't have one, which is okay. Yeah, the heat sink makes your guns cool down, uh, reduce faster, your heat generation. Yeah, which makes so sense. Uh, we're not yeah. going to use Ashley this, or we're not going to take Tally now. Tally is uh, not so good. Actually, against I don't eyes. have. Yeah, if I had great mods, I would actually take Ashley, but I don't have the most oh. ideal mod, so I'll play it safe and take Tally. Never mind, I lied to you all. Okay, there, there's a, just a lot of things you have to process for the speed run, so the, because the Thorian is technic is like a pretty technical fight. Yeah, and it can go wrong really fast, just like the Venezia fight. So it's another fight thing. I'll try to um explain live. Unfortunately, the uh. Stream that I'm getting here um, is suffering from what I like to call uh, 64p syndrome, and this fight is very green and brown. So I will try my best to figure out what's going on, but I cannot make any promises. Now we're gonna run Rip. past these gap here. I'm actually gonna try to shoot these guys for some free money. Reveries when you Discord stream this game, it's like, what if I put like a Game Boy Color filter over it? Oh yeah, this it's hard to see stuff. To be fair, I've seen a lot of runners like really badly mess up this fight just because it's hard to see everything. Yeah, like this is honestly like a difficult fight to get right. So you're just gonna run through them. Hey, I'm here. Talk to me. Yeah. All right, by me. Yeah, we're just gonna ignore these guys, and we're totally going to uh, help these guys. And by helping these guys, I mean saving here. And then clipping into this area, so now we are at the final boss. Easy. Of this planet. Just like that. So See before that, though, we, God, have to yeah. do a, we have to do a level here. We're gonna grab a advanced marksman. Advanced Warp, and uh, one point in Vanguard for extra damage. And as you see there, we got Renegade points for killing all the the colonists, even though technically, we, you'll see later on, we did not. I'm throw a grenade here, because I have an extra. So the goal of this fight is there's these nodes, and you have to kill all the nodes. But you also have to kill the things in front of the nodes, because... Sometimes the nodes have a ton of armor, and if you don't kill the things, then they just don't die. Sometimes they don't. It's weird. Um, but generally, you have to kill all the stuff, and then also shoot the nodes. That's like the, the basis of the fight here. Um, this fight, again, is quite hard. It's all about Each strength. node has a mini boss, sorry, that we want to crowd control immediately, or else the fight goes really bad really fast. So we're yeah, going to use Girl to like... get this sorry out. Kill this this about, like um, managing all your cooldowns and be able to rotate at the right times and stuff and making sure you're not missing shots or abilities that everything just comes up at the right time. It's very technical. 
Yeah, you have to manage your heat system, you have to manage your party mates, because if your party mates die, it's really bad. You have to make sure you get CC to sorry, or else it gets really bad. You also don't want to be close to these Dorians, because they deal a lot of damage to you, and it goes through your shields. Yeah, they're well, the nice a ton combat. of damage. So I'm gonna use lift on these Asari to kill it really fast, that's good. And then I need to kill these guys. Hello, Mr. Thorian. So you'll notice I kinda... dagger them. You're gonna hack that, or use the homage all that needs to hack that to just grab more stuff. Yeah. We actually want a certain amount of credits before, uh... The end of this. There is a very good gun that we're hoping to see. Yeah. And the so end game gun. Yeah. Because the and shops have like somewhat randomized here. inventory. Yeah, it's a good chance to get the weapon we want still, but I've been trolled by that before. So I actually also want to melee and knock these guys down. Now oh, Kaden's half HP. That's not good, because knocking them down just makes it easier to manage. And like I said, he. Heat management is really important in a speedrun. I don't know. So this I, last one can troll you a little last, bit. Is this the last room? We're that fast? Nah, this is like the... We finished the third node. Okay, okay. That's what I thought. Again, I'm getting real rough uh, picture quality here. I apologize. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah, basically, <laughs> we just want to clear... This is kind of like a stally, stally point since we don't have any good, good uh, cooldowns to uh, weaken this node. As you see, it has a ton of HP, so or it has a ton of armor, so we just have to kill Historian Creepers here. Slowly. As you see there, like I'm slowly doing more damage to it. And so there's going to be another Sari here. We can just lift up. Thankfully, this next one right here, the second to last one, does not have much defenses, so... We can That's just the thing where, like, it's kind of weird, where, like, some of them are really tanky, some of them just aren't. This one's pretty dangerous. There's a lot of these guys that they Yeah, and then there's the Atari that kind of sneaks around the corner here. There's a safe strat, but it's slow. Oh, nice, I yeeted her off the window. See you later. So that's actually really good, so... Now we're in another kind of stally part. We want to kill most of these Thorian Creepers here, because this next node is pretty tanky. And this is actually one of the more dangerous parts, just because that Asari does not spawn in a very good spot. So, thankfully we took care of that pretty fast here. Gonna, uh, my cooldowns are back up. Gonna yeet her off the nice. out of here. It's actually a pretty solid fight. Very okay. clean. So since we killed all of those uh, Dorians in the other room, this uh, doesn't have as much defense, and that's the Dorian fight. And now some more cutscenes. More visions, yay! We love our visions. Yeah, so the person kind of controlling, I believe, Dorian comes out, who is one of uh, Venezia's uh, fellow Asari crewmate. And then now uh, she's going, going to give us another uh, acid trip, as I like to say. Um, yeah, because like Shepard had this vision from the first beacon, and we're not, he's not really sure what's going on with it. So part of the main plot is you getting clarity into your vision. Yeah, so it was meant. So I don't think we mentioned it, but it's basically some Prothean vision. These Protheans are kind of like an ancient race from, I think, 50,000 years ago or something like yeah, that. Yeah, like 30 or 50,000. 50,000 Sark sounds right, knowing what I know about Mass Effect lore. Right? Isn't that the time? Yeah, I think I don't it's want to about the time. Stuff. There, there's just a lot of stuff that, yeah, no, I don't spoil really the want one. To spoil. We can spoil it. Yeah, once I have much in this time, but yeah, there's just a lot of stuff that you have to take in between. But yeah, embrace eternity, aka we're internally in the speed run. Ah, uh, it's a cockroach. Ah, uh, it's an evil face cockroach. 
Space we'll totally Launcher. not know what it is. It is 50k, okay. Yeah, that, that sounds right. It's like, I, I think that's a cycle, right? That's a cycle? Yeah, something like that. It still didn't make any sense. Yeah, as you, as you see, it's it's still kind of cloudy in Shepard's mind. So now we're going to try to buy the Stiletto 4. Yep, so I'm going to make a quick save here before talking to Ledra. And let's hope I have enough money. Up. There we go. There we go, that's a lot of money. Easy. I like to see that. Easy clap. Yeah, last run, last marathon run Sanjan did. Uh, there's a little bit of, um, where can we get money? Because for some reason, just nothing was worth, worth any money. It was very weird. Yeah. I had to do some, uh, you know, very strange stuff to make up the money, but we're okay now. We are, we are gaming. So now we have a much, much stronger weapon here. As you can see, I am going to literally, uh, one hit these guys. Like, I don't care. Now we're just gonna leave. Yep, and we're there's gonna hear the So the reason why we do our plan in order is to try to get enough money to buy the Stuttle for as soon as possible. Because I mean, technically we could do Theorem early, but the last boss of Theorem is really difficult. Pretty difficult with uh, our levels. And as you see here, where I actually don't do the weapon swap skip. I just not this cutscene play because for whatever reason it's extremely hard to do the weapon swap for this since there's I think multiple cutscenes layering out on each other. But here we get some plot stuff. We gotta talk to the council that we're just going to uh, totally listen to. Yeah, this is gonna be the spot too where Sanjan starts to be a little bit more uh, conservative with grenades. Yeah. So I actually need grenades for the final. The second to last part of the speed run, then you're gonna see why it's, later. It's very good. You should be excited for that. It is extremely funny. So now we're gonna fly to Theorem to uh, find uh, Liara, who is an Asari that's studying the the Protheans. So we kind of need her help to find out what these Protheans are all about. Another fan favorite. And then, so this is a pure, pretty much 50% Mako section, and we are going to do some cool tricks. So stay tuned. Hello, yeah, this please. Is the, this is going to be the easier of the two major Mako tricks. Yep. It's, it's still very goofy, don't worry. We plop. Yeah, there's a bit of driving, but you're going to see the, some really cool Makos. Excuse me. Make all stuff happening. So, um, this lava, if you touch it, you die. You know, I learned that... just a couple hours ago that you can order your squad mates to go into the lava and they will go into the lava and instantly die. That's so sad. You're the worst commander. Well, we did recently find a new trick that involves the Mako and the stuff. But, yeah. In a speedrun, Shepard's kind of the worst commander. Yeah, Shepard is a real, real jerk. All Shepard's interested in doing is saving the galaxy fast. Nothing can stand in his way. Um, we're also going to do, coming up here, we're going to uh, have a Hot Wheels moment. So get excited for that as well. Yeah, so look at here, the spawn enemies. We don't care. We're just going to ignore them. Well, you didn't ignore that one. I just... I just gave it a friendly little bop with the Mako's cannons. Okay. So usually there's like a kind of side route you take, but... We are Mako gamers. We are going to jump over this gate. Even it though Kaden is... Uh, Kaden doesn't believe us. Commander, we have liftoff. Oh. Uh, e that's fine. Uh -oh. Okay. It's just, uh, just have to climb up here. Yeah, uh, so this is the definition of, uh, just make good things. Uh, so I kind of uh, landed in a slightly unfortunate spot, but there, we, there go. we go. So there's a side path you can take that saves, that only loses you like five seconds, but 
I this wanted to show off this black strat. Trying to kill this uh, friendly neighborhood person guarding. And then we're going to get back on the Mako here. And then we get a little bit of more uh, leisure <laughs> leisurely drive. The fun little stroll. Some weather we're having here on Therum, huh? Yeah. Actually, it looks kind of nice. It's very cold where I am right now. We're just going to kill these, uh, dying. We're going to kill these uh, little gifts here. Friendly neighborhood uh, armatures here on the way, just because we can. And the XP from this point on it <laughs> isn't strict, but ideally I would like to hit a certain level so that I can learn everything in one go later on. I love this next skip. It's probably... It's probably my favorite one. I think I like it more than the Ilo skip. Just because, like, the Ilo skip is really funny, but this one is, like, so casually funny. Yeah, you can do it in casual gameplay, too. And you actually can also do it in the Legendary Edition as well. It's just a little bit harder. And so, the people playing Legendary Edition, uh, get your notes ready. Yeah, this but. is the trick that you can um, integrate into your casual playthroughs. Yep, because doing this next skip saves quite a bit of time because we, uh, we have to go through a lot of stuff and there's a pretty hard battle with a GIF armature at the end that we don't have time to deal with. Yeah, I like not having to fight things so the game doesn't expect you to do the things you're doing rather than having to fight things because you're doing the things the game expects you to do. It just makes a superiority. Personally speaking, at least. Maybe I'm alone in there in that one. Yeah, so <laughs> we're coming up pretty soon to it. <laughs> it is a bit of precise trick. And you can easily lose quite a bit of time. So which I have been doing recently in my runs just because, you know, sometimes I'm just not the make a whisperer. Casually running over that gaff. Cause why not? Yeah, you gotta get, yeah, gotta get that experience. So you actually get less experience killing stuff on a Mako. This was fixed yeah. in the Legendary Edition. Ooh, nice grenade. Wait, that wasn't intentional? I Apparently not. They probably fixed it in the Legendary Edition. That's wild. I thought it was because it was easy. Okay, so you line up right, and then you and just go through. You, yep, just like that. Just it's like that, that easy. You're supposed to get out of the Mako and like do this on foot. Um, if that wasn't clear by what just happened, that that's what the game expects you to do. But instead, what you can do is you can just go sideways. Um, yeah. I just like how like it's so quick. Like there's no set like pomp and circumstance or setup to it. You just you just drive forward and you you squeeze on through. Yeah, and driving through this area is actually hard because there's a lot of invisible walls purely because the Mako's not intended to be here. So this fight here, you're supposed to kill a bunch of Geth, but again, as we kind of hinted at earlier, the game does not know. It does not expect you to have the Mako here, so it just, like, doesn't turn on any of the AI. It's strange. Yeah, well, you're not supposed to enter through the Mako, which breaks the AI, so... Thankfully, we only need to kill one thing, which is this giant armature here, to get in. Yeah, that makes a good point. Uh, that the Mako's like a cat. It's a liquid. Oh, you're right. Maybe mm -hmm. that's why I love the Mako so much. It's like a cat. Yeah, I it's love... like a cat. I love kittens. I love cats. Cats are great. So yeah, as you can see, these geth are like not doing anything. You have to kill that big one. Now we can go into the mine. They're so stunned that somehow Shepard managed to make it through using the Mako. That they're just sit there like sitting ducks. And then the mine is the hardest trick in the game, in my opinion. And that's called Remember Six Numbers. Yep. If anyone's heard of uh, Diamond Says, I'm not really great at it. I'm so yeah. bad at it. It's actually, aside from the puzzle I tried to do earlier on, the only mandatory puzzle we have to do. So we kill these, uh, normally you have to go down a bunch of elevators and, uh, stairs, but like I said, we're a specter. We can go down here. So we have authorization to clip through walls. Yep. So I'm going to shoot that to get into combat here. And then I'm going to order Caden and Tally to stand here because it's going to have a little neat trick here. Yeah, this one's weird. So if you, it's someone, yeah, so you can start a cutscene quickly with Liara by talking to one of your squad mates while she's talking about that. I'm trapped. I, need help. I don't know. Yeah, Liara needs help, so we're going to save her. We've got to kill these uh, 
Geff here first. Our friendly neighborhood Geff. So we gotta fire this uh, good old mining laser here. Yeah, that's the hardest trick in the game, so get ready. And now I have to memorize these things. So this is unfortunately RNG. Not bad, because it's not randomized on, I think, Xbox, but on PC and other versions, it's randomized. So you can lose a decent bit of time there if you're really unlucky. Now we're going to... So the force field's an impenetrable barrier, right? That's what force fields are designed to do. Yep, totally is, uh, not, not let people get through them. That's like the whole point of a force field. Uh, but Liar's force field sucks, so now we're here. Yeah, it, it didn't deter Shepard, I should say. We've got the authorization. We've Yeah. We 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 have the power. Or should I say we've got the goods for it. And so this is the last fight that actually lots of people have trouble casually. But since we have a really good weapon, this fight is really easy. You gonna surrender? Or you're not going there to. There's a reason no, you're in my way. Another moral choice. Oh, Dunzo, easy. Sorry, buddy. You tried. So we get this long cutscene here. So the thing about, at least this game, is that the sound balancing is really terrible, and this cutscene will always play at max volume. But thankfully. Before this run, I usually fix it by turning all the sounds to max, at least in game, but in the window sound settings, I turn it all the way down. So, nobody's ears will be killed. Yeah. We are a jump scare. Yeah, they've got to make the Grand Perilous TM escape from the mines that is collapsing. This is a reference to the end of uh, Super Metroid, actually. Really? I haven't played that no, game, no, so... No, no, that's a joke. Oh. So, we have to also weapon swap to skip this cutscene, because if we don't skip this cutscene, Liar is going to give us a vision that we did not ask for, so... And that wastes another 50 seconds, because it's an unskippable cutscene. Uh, so this is played on, or speedruns are played, generally played on casual difficulty. Casual difficulty is actually fine in a speedrun because there's a really good balance. Like you're, you do a lot of damage, but they do a ton of damage to you. And um, so, right. Amy, is it I have Vermeer to... Vermeer or Vermeer? I, I sometimes swap how I pronounce yeah, it. Yeah, I feel like I do too. Is All that right, the important Amy. question for me? I will give you, yeah, one minute. I'll give you one minute warning now, because it's about like five minutes or like three, four more minutes. Okay. Well, I know what the important question is. Hold up. So I've, you, can, I've, you can give I've me a, about it. you can give me the answer in four to five minutes, but are we saving Ashley or Caden? So let me know the answer in like two or three minutes. Shout out to, you some um, time to think about it. Shout out to fellow Pokemon speedrunner Echi, who just played this game casually recently and uh, did not realize that the Mako spawns here and ran about one third of the way through here on foot before realizing, before I was like, wait, aren't you supposed to have the Mako? There's no way you're supposed to do this on foot. My goodness. It took forever. And yeah, so uh, he's really shouting us out in chat as I just drag him, barely. Yeah, but this first part's pretty much. Uh... No brainer. There's gonna be a cool trick that we can use to save some time, but a lot of this is just Mako driving. There's no crazy Mako tricks that we have to uh, deal with, so, in this planet. So we're just gonna be on our merry way killing stuff. So there's a, just a couple enemies that we have to kill. I will try to get as much uh, experience as possible so that I can hit a certain level, but it's generally relatively easy to hit that experience, necessary experience. And I also have five grenades, it's actually really good. So I can use an extra grenade here and be fine. So you want to target that middle one here, because it'll kill uh, multiple enemies.
say hi to this uh, Gev Colossus. Hi, Gev Colossus. Bye, Gev Colossus. Or Armature that didn't deserve it, but you know, we, uh, it's sacrificed in the name of experience. I didn't realize that all the Bioware speedrunning is in the same Discord. Is that how you got into this? Yeah, so actually, talking about the Discord, most Bioware games are in the Discord, but except for two of the game series, I believe. Knights of the Old Star Wars, Knights of the Old Republic, and the okay. Jade Empire have their own Discord. I didn't so know we're going to separate them here in a certain spot. But that's so, so far away later. from the stairs. Why would you go over there? That's crazy. It'll be for a pretty specific reason you're going to see here in a second. It's a surprise play play that will come in handy later. I'm going to kill these enemies because we have to go open the gates and, uh, you know, do some uh, fancy mission stuff. Now gates are open, and uh, rather than run all the way back, rather than run all the way around, you can just get in the makeup from up here if you park it right, which is nice. Yep. It's... Yeah, it's not as it's a slightly precise, but not as precise. So we do the same thing for here as well. So I'm gonna park my Mako right here. Oh, that's too far up. And then we're gonna basically do the same thing. Yeah, the, these gates are all pretty much copy pasted. Yeah. They might just be copy-pasted. I don't actually know if they're perfectly identical, but they're very similar, if not. Oh, that was... That was close. Catching. You good? Yeah, I'm good. Oops. I was a little too reckless there. Should be okay, though. Because I can kill these guys. I don't know if you it. know this, but there are enemies everywhere. Enemies everywhere? Yeah, but... So, so that's the last part for part one. And so, just a warning, we're about to hit that spot, Amy, so... I w actually... Amy, who- Thinking it over, because I don't want- I don't want chat to hate me. I don't want to be exposed as a fake yeah, gamer you, if I save the you, wrong person. Yeah, you- you figured out the question. Yeah. Actually, you probably figured it out a while ago. I figured it out about- I- I, I told you directly, when I, that's why, so... Oh, okay. <laughs> when I- and I was like, what decision do you make here? Oh! Yeah, the the one. The, the decision. So who will be? Who are we saving, Amy? <sighs> There's a right answer to uh, this, by the way. All right. Uh, all right. Well, I'll, I'll go with what I did on my on my play when I played this game like f 15 years ago. I saved Ashley. Okay, we're saving Ashley then. I don't know if that's the right answer, but it's the answer. That, well, there is no right answer because it doesn't matter, but. Yeah. Generally, most some speedrunners will prefer to save Caden because Caden is a much better character to uh, for the end game. But because you have asked to save Ashley, we will be saving Ashley. But we don't use Ashley for the rest of the speedrun, so. Yeah, but the real Mass Effect one memory is every enemies are everywhere, and then the real Mass Effect two memory is this hurts you. Yeah, it kind of haunts you. I was assuming direct control for Mass Effect 2. Yeah, that was a yeah. Mass Effect 2 thing. Yeah, but those two were the ones from 2. I haven't heard this dialogue in a long time, honestly. Yeah, uh, whichever one you pick doesn't really matter that much. Um, yeah, I mean, if you pick good. Ashley, it's a quicker menu. But if you pick Caden, he's a much better character. Overall, for the end game, so it's okay. There was no wrong answer, Amy. It depends on the player's preference, but exactly. Well, good. That was the real moral choice. Yeah. <laughs> when I said there's a correct answer. Did you believe me? And you didn't, so you've done the right choice. All answers are the right choice. Exactly. Only you can decide your Mass Effect destiny, and that's the beauty of Mass Effect. Yeah. Yeah, so... Also to note, that's why we don't recruit Rex, because you would have had an extra cutscene with Rex. That, uh... Involves a... A very bad thing happening. So not only does it waste time, it makes me very sad. It is very sad. 
When I played this game originally, I uh, did not have enough um, Paragon to save Rex, and then I had accidentally overwritten all or my save, so I couldn't go back, as far as I know, and so I simply edited my save because I didn't want to feel sad. Yeah, poor Rex. So this console is kind of hard to target. That's why I try to stand in a certain spot. But I suppose if chat wanted to hear my opinion, I always save Kaden, because Kaden is uh, the best character, in my opinion, the best character in Mass Effect, right next to Rex. So there you go. He's Feel free to uh. Character. Feel free to hmm. feel free to try to argue different. It is headcanon after all. True. I don't know who my favorite Mass Effect character is now. I think about it. The, the all basic the characters answer. are honestly really good, and for yeah. at least for me, they all have like the redeeming factors. I just use in Mass Effect Two and Two. I just use Garrison more than like the whole time. So we want to uh, kill the, those enemies as fast as possible because uh, more if we don't kill them as fast as possible, then uh, the husk spawn and we can't open the door quick. And so we're gonna do another clip here. To get through the bridge, normally you have to do some stuff to uh, open up the bridge, but we don't care. It's a very good picture of uh, uh, remember the elevator from um, Gangnam Style? The elevator. Oh from my the god, music video. that picture is so there's good! One, I can't believe one you with, found that picture with Garrus do and Caden, and it's so good. Which I found because Sanjam was like, "There's no Caden fan art," and I'm like. That's there's no way that's true. I'm gonna go on Tumblr and I'm gonna find Caden fan art for you. Oh my! I, you know, I, I need my Philip Caden fan art. Yeah. There's there's not enough Caden fan art in the world. It would make me a very happy fan. Hello. The quick save fail messages are because um that's from Sanjan spamming quick save to just go to quick save to avoid things like soft locking and things like that. Yeah, I, those. <laughs> Depends on the... Ooh. Yeah, you basically want... I basically spam it so that, like, there's a little bit of lag when you actually do the save, so... I can actually tell, like, when I have saved. Yeah, a lot of this second bar is just, like, running around. And then we're gonna get to the final part here. So, the reason why <laughs> I asked about <laughs> the character is because there's gonna be a bomb here that's planted, or the other Vermeer survivor, or the other Vermeer, or the other human character will uh, take care of it. And we always say the person at the bomb here with the bomb because we can get to them much faster. Yeah, you technically don't make the decision like normally until uh, about now. But, uh,. In the speed run, in order to match faster, you actually make that decision earlier. Yeah, so I shot these canisters because it's going to be useful for later. Now we're just, uh. We're just, we're just hanging out. We're just hanging you're, out. We're just chilling. If you talk to your squad mates, you can possibly soft block here. It's happened to me before. Yeah, so now the other human squad mate will plant the bomb here. And then we're gonna do our final skill menu after this. There's the bomb. bomb I mean, I have two squad mates left. Now we can obviously throw in. So I'm gonna learn Master Marksman, Ad Master Throw, Advanced Lift, and all the points to intimidate, which is what we are saving up for. I don't know that they changed in two and three is that uh the skill menu gets simplified immensely. So but you really do have more um at least in three, I don't remember about if it's the same case in two, you do have more uh, build for right, I guess like there's like different paths for each ability, which is cool. That was a good fight. I did not anticipate that Krogan flying all the way to the other side. 
pretty cool stuff. So the person you save right here is always going to be on the left, I believe. And so, yeah, you have, uh, you're saving Ashley. Thanks to Amy. So we're going to clip here to kind of get on top of this. It's actually easy to kind of trip over. But now we are here and with it a, also breaks, picked... breaks the AI. So we can just uh, take some pot shots at them. You saved Ashley because you're both your name start with A. Sol solidarity. True. Had True. to do it. Rip Caden. Oh, hey, it's Silver Surfer. What was that other villain on like a Silver Surfer kind of thing? Like from co the Marvel comics or something like that? Green. I forgot it's Does name. Green Goblin do that? I don't know a lot about comics, I'll be honest. Neither do I. So I too. So Saren's here. So like, Saren's like. Dialogue. Yeah, so when you actually do that dialogue in order to get more running points, Saren's pretty much just like, I love the Reapers, they're cool, and we hang out, and we're best friends. And then you're like, no, they're going to betray you. And Saren's like, uh, I don't think that's true. I think that uh, we're actually pretty tight, and uh, it's the only way for organics to survive. Yep, and then Sean Brud's like, bruh, you, you've done goofed. Falcon Punch, really satisfying cutscene. Where Saren gets bopped in the face. And then he takes off on his Bowser his Bowser car. Ah, sorry, Shepard, but the Prothean Prince says this is another castle. Oh yeah, we're gonna... <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, we're not gonna see... Who's actually for the rest of the game, cuz... We, we and, prefer, uh, uh, we prefer, a vil we prefer Liara and Tally, so we're gonna do another, uh, weapon swap gift here. Anyone know where I left my Caden? Aw, oh, jeez. Uh, yeah, it's Citadel okay. Two. Yep, so this is, uh, you know, we're trapped on a Citadel, but you think Shepard cares? You can't, you, say, you can't simply trap a specter. Yeah, you can't simply do that. Not Specter means ghosts, and ghosts can go through walls. Exactly. So we're going to do a somewhat precise skip here. To skip this dialogue, saves like five seconds if I get this. So... <laughs> it skips the part where Udina kind of traps us. For some reason, I thought you clipped exit game for a second there. I was like, wait... <laughs> So there's actually no combat in here. I talked to her so that uh, we can quickly get into that, and I'm actually gonna change my difficulty here. Hardcore mode. Oh, we're just getting. And we're crazy. becoming a hardcore gamer. I'm gonna do a yeah, safety before, save here. Before, if you... Everything here before pretty casual stuff. I think anyone could do it in their first playthrough, but now we're on the hardcore stuff. So you know, Udina kind of trapped us back on the Citadel. Yeah. Because of, uh, you know, some politics stuff, but guess what? We're Commander Shepard, we don't care. Udina somehow managed to be the only character who's more of a jerk than us. I know, but you know what? We, you know, we have plans. We have plans. That's not the best place to drop down, but hey, we're back That's on the normal. That's pretty funny. All right, Ilo's time. Um, yeah. Ilos is a super normal standard planet. Nothing weird really going on in Ilos. Pretty standard, regular stuff. Yep. So right? <laughs> certainly, it's totally skip it's all of Ilos. Totally fine. It's a totally normal planet. Every every day's gonna be a okay. You should, yeah. You should let me be on Ilos. I'm normal and can be trusted with the Mako. We're, we're gonna have a lot of fun with the Mako, and the Mako's gonna have its grand time. Everything will be okay. But first, we gotta get through some cutscenes. <laughs> and 
And so ILOS is in the any percent the biggest major reset point, and you are going to see why in a, in a few moments here. Because we have to do a, we have to do something that is extremely inconsistent, but you, the viewer, and chat are going to love it, and you'll understand why. Because if it's you extremely goofy, if you remember what we said about the Mako, the thing that's going to happen is going to happen. So we're gonna take Liara and Tally, and then we're just gonna land on Ilos. So there's gonna be a cool cutscene. So basically, in the plot point now, Ilos is the second to last planet, and we found out where this artifact, I think, called a conduit is, and we're trying to get to it before Saren is, because Saren has uh, some nefarious, totally, totally uh, evil plans for his uh, attempt at world domination, TM. Hopefully I can show off the full skip. This is why yeah, my estimate's a little high for this there category. There are two different skips that you do here. Um, Sanchan got both of them last time, though, with a little bit of a finickiness, but they are extraordinarily yeah. unreliable. Yep, so we're gonna kill these three Gaff here. We're gonna send Liara on a suicide mission. It's totally fine. There's a reason why we save four grenades, so... I have to watch Liara's HP. I want her HP to as low as possible. That's good. So we're gonna put this Mako in this position right here. You're gonna notice I am totally going to do normal things with the Mako. Hey, uh... Hey, Liara. You doing fine there, Liara? Liara, come over here. No, d nothing, nothing weird. Yep. Yeah, yeah. It's totally normal. So we're gonna do a little. You know, the Mako, oh, no. our companion, needs uh some fuel. Unfortunately, the Liara is the fuel. And then if I do this right, did I save? Yeah, I did. So I'm gonna buffer here, and the Mako's gonna go crazy. I have no idea where I am. I'm just gonna do a safety quick save here. See where I am. Oh, but I'm not inside. Whee! Whee! I don't think that was it. Yeah. Yeah. Say the Mako popcorns. So what's happening here is the Mako is basically freaking out when so I I entered the Mako at the exact same time Liara stands up after dying or getting knocked down. And so when that happens, the Mako physics go, well, nothing short of very wonky. So the thing is with the Mako that makes the skip so inconsistent is that we cannot control where it goes, so... There's a very famous... There's no known way to do it. Yeah, there's no, like, really concise way to do it. So, you can't be trapped here for a good amount of time, and I have not had good RNG with the Mako. So... That's what I told you all was normal. This is just standard Mako stuff. This is just Mako things. In fact, these Mako skip, these Mako skips are so bad that we're creating a new category without these skips, where it's very likely we are. That's what no. That's if you're not familiar with speedrunning nomenclature, there's a term called NMG that's pretty popular in a lot of games, and it stands for I no Mako it. glitches. All right, so that's part one done. So normally you'd have to go down and go down an elevator and talk to some kind of like. Prothean Automate AI thingy majigger to uh, open those doors, but with the Mako skip we can get in. But that's not it, folks. There's one more we have to do. Second one is harder. Second one is a decent bit harder, well, but we are trying to find consistent skips for it. But basically, we want to clip all the way up to the top of the roof. So I'm gonna start this. Uh, park the Mako here and poor Liara's. Poor, poor Liara is gonna get some more grenades thrown at her. There are two versions of this. One saves more time, but is a but is harder. Yeah. If we don't, I will hopefully try to get this done. But if not, we can do this the normal way, which loses us some time. So again, use stasis to try to position my mouse. It's roughly the word of Mako kind of eats itself is kind of roughly based on 
your mouse position. That's not a great starting position. Please get out. So funny. <laughs> so, I hope chat you will enjoy this. That's not a good spot either to reset there. And so yeah, this you can be stuck here for quite a good while, and I will give it like five or six minutes before I will just decide to go on. But if it's we do like get those, this, it's like those like old uh, troll face memes where it's like cover yourself in oil, go outside when it's raining, fly. Mako, Very no. same energy. Mako, ba no. Bad Mako. So you want so we use stasis there to pretty much uh kinda can control like where we hopefully ideally want the Mako to go. You know, this is why everyone hates Shepard, because Shepard just like throwing grenades at people willy nilly left, right, and center. Going into good. like out of vo out of the void, you know. It's not good leadership. Alright, I would like the Mako to, you know, exit here at any time. Oh, you know what I did? It's being feisty again. I think I see what happened. I'm supposed to park the Mako. No, that's actually the right position. Yeah, that's why um we was we were saving grenades for so long because we need the right number of grenades to get these kills so that we can yeah. meet the Mako. Okay, well, we got oh, out. It's oh. promising. No, we're back in. Not Hi, on Mako. It. Oi, caramba. You need to cooperate. I want to show off to the chat just how good you are. Don't you, know, don't you want to show off as well, Mako? I don't know if that was audible. I don't know if anybody heard a thud. I don't- I didn't hear anything. Okay, at least on my end. That was me yeeting my phone off my desk. Oh. So hopefully you got off here at a decent spot. So I'm trying to get to the top of that roof over there. So, there's a couple ways you can try to man manipulate the Mako to go where you want, but it's not, like, overly consistent. And yes, you can repair the Mako while unfortunate. So... Alright. This time for sure, the Mako will cooperate with me. This time for yeah, sure. Yeah, as you can see, this is why this has been a pretty, uh... What's... What, what, would, you, would you call it, um... Controversial trick? Yeah, I would call it a controversial. Oh? 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 I'm gonna make a safety savior, but that should be good. Is this I'm the good version? Sure that's good. Yeah. Nice. So we've landed on the top of the roofs here. I'm gonna do a safety save here because, uh, reasons, and you're going to see. Some of the weirdest stuff in Mako gaming history, so... We're gonna drive on top of this roof. Actually, I'm going to, uh... Yeah, that's a good idea. Change my settings here. And, you know, we're just gonna have a normal stroll with the Mako on the top of this building. You know, everything's okay, folks. And so, basically, what the skip allows you to do is... It allows you to skip going down to talk to Vigil as well as skip an entire cutscene. So we're going to do a lot of really fancy footwork with the Mako, if you haven't heard already. And so we're going to have this nice little leisurely stroll. To here. And hopefully I can get this trick right, because it's actually also discovered, this new version was actually also discovered by Lufex, like two days ago, literally. Oh, this is the new version. Yep, so I we're was, going I to skip cutscenes. I, I was like, I expected a tree. So we're going to skip all the way down here. Oh no, here's a tree. So um, this is a tree. We're going to make a jump to this area. Bop, that's fine. 
So we used to go down there, but we actually found a new path that can save us time. Oh. Gonna do some fancy Mako shenanigans God, here. I love the Mako so much. See, this is why you should always stand the Mako. Just look at this. How could you all like hate the Mako after seeing these tricks? Literally. It's a real Skyrim horse movement. It's even better than horses. True. So we're gonna eat ourselves off here. And hopefully I don't hit the bad place. And yes, yeah, so this is just a normal day. Totally normal. So I'm gonna go here. Go kind of like to the corner-ish. So normally there's a cutscene that plays when you have to get to the conduit. And we are at the safe place, and we just have to make a jump here. And yeah, normally there's like a huge lore dump in right to this, uh, like little place. And lo and behold, we are going to make our way to the conduit. We skip the cutscene. Welcome to ILOS, folks. This is totally normal. And uh, you have infinite time to get to the conduit, it looks like. The timer's not yeah. counting down. The timer's not counting, like, but these uh... have a feature up still. You know, there's like a timer here, and you have to get to the conduit before it closes. Also, something bad will happen to the Mako. Rest in peace. Well, this is why it's not in Mass Effect 2 and 3. Yep. Um, because unfortunately, <laughs> we did not do the Mako's loyalty mission. Yeah. And so it does not make it through. But uh, a salute for our fallen soldier, the Mako. Can the I get the a, best can squad I get mate in Mass Effect 1. The best squad mate ever in Mass Effect 1. I'll miss it. Sniff, sniff. I like how Leora and Tally didn't even show up in that. Normally they show up. So now we're at, now we are at the Citadel. <laughs> so we gotta beat up these husks first. Uh, so what? By the way, there's a bit of a content warning if you're squeamish about a certain character committing a. Yeah. I guess you say the word suicide. Please, uh, please go look at a cute cat, uh, picture. So, about that. a one minute warning. About a one minute warning or so. It'll be for like four or five seconds. But that is your content warning for this game. This is like the trench run section. Um, yeah. <laughs> Your squad mates die, but they're just gonna get resurrected later. They'll be, be fine. fine. They're taking a nap. Oh, they're taking a dirt nap. They'll just magically come back to us. You know, it's yeah. part of the Mako magic. There you go. Oh, there, there, Liara. Hi, Liara. Welcome just... back, Liara. That's space magic for you. Yeah. That's the power of um, dubstep wizardry. Actually, I guess in Mass Effect 1, there's no there's no dubstep to it. A biotic wizardry, whatever. So we're coming up in the final boss of the game now. Yeah. Um, and the reason why we did all of this Renegade stuff earlier on, even though it was slower for the uh, Rachni crewing and things like that, is because if you are a Max Renegade or Max Paragon, you could skip the first phase of the Saren fight. Yep, and that's why I have this content warning, which is going to be yeah. in effect uh, right about now. Um, you essentially convince Saren that he is being, uh, that he has been, um, indoctrinated, which is like a, a thing that we normally would have explained to us in Ilos, but essentially like the Reapers can mind control people and you convince Saren that he is actually too far gone and has already been indoctrinated and is not as in control of himself as he thinks. Yeah, so now we're <laughs> going to convince him that, uh, you know, he's, a. Uh... So yeah, you know, content warning coming up yep. right here. Goodbye, Shepard. Thank you. Those mud, those mud kip resets are just too much for him. Ah, the mood. I, I feel it too. <laughs> all, right, all right, you all can come back now. You can That's come back it. now, yeah. So I'm going to do a safety level up here. More points and lift, and so this is the final kind of like big decision, or the second to final big decision. And saving the council is actually faster by a couple seconds. The cutscene for saving the council is faster by I think like 
six or seven seconds. And so there's gonna be like two minutes of cutscenes before dun 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 something happens. What do you mean? You beat Saren. We're done, right? Time to stop. Yeah, we're, we're well, we're done with run, Saren. Right? This is, uh, you know, we throw it at the, the Citadel tech, at least on the foot soldier side, but we still got a, a big, uh, lobster, squid, cockroach, whatever you want yeah, to do. Yeah, it is with. more of a. Oh, I remember, I guess it's like, it's like a half lobster, half just like. Nah, it's mostly lobster. I think it's it's got big lobster energy. Um, big lore revealed that we skipped an Ilos is essentially that uh, the Protheans didn't actually build the Citadel or the Master Realize like we thought. They were actually built by the Reapers. Uh, you exist because we allow it, and you'll die because we demand it, or whatever the quote is. Or essentially, like, the Reapers built all this technology specifically so that, um, like, later races would become dependent on it, and that way they can be in control. Yep, so... We're gonna make sure Saren is totally dead. Bop. Yep, definitely got him. Got him, Sharon, folks. Sharon's ship, ship name is Sovereign, which is also the Reaper. Yeah. So the Reapers are just a big giant, uh, cockroach, squid, whatever you want to call them. Wait, did I actually get the quote right? I didn't remember if die was the right term. I think so. Heck yeah, I've not watched that cutscene in a long He's time. He's totally so. dead. Oof. Wait, what is happening to him? Uh, that wasn't planned. So this is the real final boss. And he what is in if, two pieces. What if... Uh... Saren, but a Geth Hopper? Uh, the Kid Reese has really got to him. Can't blame him. There are some real... Every Mass Effect game has a real goofy final boss in a lot of ways. Yeah. I love the Mass Effect 2 final boss. It's so goofy. So... Oh, I... That's actually really bad. Did you miss the warp? Yeah, I missed, I missed the throw, so I was supposed to lift there. That's what I meant. So I'm just gonna hope, uh, I, I'm gonna have to stall this fight a little bit, but it's not a big deal, but I, ideally you CC them to hell. And Are you seeing you see um, CC on him? Uh, but when he goes up here season. and... Oops, sorry. The reason why you don't want him to jump up because he's gonna sit there and waste your time, like he is doing right now. And he t pretty much uh, doesn't take much damage. Come on, buddy. And the reason why Karen, uh, uh, Caden's generally better too is because um, he just has better CC and stuff. Yeah, he, and also he has overload, which Liara actually yeah. does not have at this level. So ide your ideal party is actually Ka Caden and Tally. I knew I didn't get it right. It's N, but I was I was pretty close. I'll take it. And so now the second part happens, and there's just basically just a rehash. He regains his shields, but hopefully I can CC him, and we can do this in a very smooth rotation. Which, by the way, time ends when uh, we do get the last hit on Saren, so get ready. So we just kind of drop him down here. Yeah, all your cooldowns come back during the cutscene, which is nice. Yeah, which, yeah so I'm going to refresh my cooldowns here, and this should be a very straightforward fight. And time's coming up very soon here. As soon as Saren's HP goes down to zero, and time. And that was Mass Effect 1. Give it up for Congratulations, Sandman. Congratulations, folks. We have saved the galaxy, aka the it's, Citadel. It from... will not be in danger anymore. No, nope, totally it. not anymore. It's The Reaper threat has been dealt with. So you're going to see this really awesome cutscene here. Very satisfying. I would try to say less because this cutscene is just awesome. It's shields are now. Now's our chance. Get it with everything we got. Hack it out. Guard on my bike. Zoom. <laughs> this are in a 
press F for Sovereign, you know? It tried the JPG. We're having lobster for dinner tonight. We're having mechanical lobster for dinner. Everyone's, e everyone's uh, eating good. And you also get this pretty cool uh, also ending cutscene where you think this debris that fell over. Excuse me. Took care of Shepard, but... Yeah, since... Oh uh, no! Shepard! Shepard, no! Hey, Shepard will be fine. We have the Lazarus, Lazarus Project. Hmm. That's true. Well, will we find out? We'll, fi we'll find out, maybe. But, yeah, that was Mass Effect 1. This is a really cool category, and as you see there, there are some RNG variants, but these tricks are honestly, like, really cool, and it's actually not too bad coming from... From a speed, so I actually primarily speedrun turn-based RPG games, and this was my, my very first like shooter-based RPG game that I played in. Honestly, it wasn't too bad. It's a very nice transition. There is some RNG involved in this category, but actually, speaking of, as May meant or uh, Corbin May mentioned earlier, there's a new category split which doesn't use the Mako, so which is a lot less RNG and more skill-based. But if you love Mako tricks. Which Have we you do. fun Mako tricks, which we we do. This category is for you. So give a, I like to give a shout out to the Bioware community, really cool group of people. Letter Swords for making a really nice tutorial, and especially to Lufex who found who is a very very good glitch hunter, and that and he is the reason why we have the Mako glitch. So I hope all you Mako stands enjoy the moment of her. The make a moment of a uh, being a hero. The, the make will be missed. I am and a Mako fan, and I do enjoy it. And shout outs to May as well for commentating for me, and uh, Thanks for having me. Hotfix for having me as well, and PSR or er, Pokemon Speedruns Diversity for being an awesome group. Totally Always not love. advertising the Pokemon group in here. Captain? Yeah, shout out. I I also like Pokemon Speedrunning Diversity because I'm also on this team. Um, yeah, I, uh, I love this game, and this run's really cool, so thanks for having me on to commentate once again. Yeah, thanks for- thanks- thanks very much, Amy, for having us. This yeah. is the best Mass Effect game. <laughs> yeah, and thanks to you both for coming on and doing this. I, you know, all the Out of Bounds clips were why I really like watching speedruns of this game, because I just think they're so funny. Just save, it's load, so Out of Bounds, done. There's a- <laughs> the, the, the skips in this game are really nice because they save like all the boring parts, and you still have like a lot of the really good technical combat. And right. the say the the skips sans the Mako require like a de like require like a little bit of a difficulty curve to learn. And once you kind of get good or become great at it, like it's extremely satisfying. Coming from a RPG speedrunner who deals with RNG all the time. Yeah, for sure. All right, well. If uh, if y'all enjoyed this run, uh, Sanjan is running Mass Effect One again for flame for Frost Fatales. Excuse me, not flame. Uh, Janu February twenty seventh to March fifth, uh, and Corvime will be running Pokey Clicker. Uh, exclamation point Whoa. FF in chat or gamesdonequick.com slash frame fatales for more info on that. I'm also commentating like every Pokemon run in in it, so you'll if you want more of me. Uh, I'll be there. If you don't want more of me, that sucks. You'll be there anyway. <laughs> <laughs> this this uh, uh, speedrun is, or Mass Effect will be the epic conclusion. So it will be. Yeah. When you tune in, for that. there's going to be maybe some new tricks that will we'll, yeah. we'll be seen. I do not believe I'll be commentating that time, but I'm very excited for it. Yeah. Uh, and for people who are just coming in, uh, or for maybe people who are uh, catching this later uh if you're watching this on youtube check us out at twitch.tv slash games done quick uh for live shows every night at 7 p.m eastern uh and if you're watching us on twitch and you want to maybe miss the randomizer run from earlier in kingdom hearts or you missed uh the mass effect run want to watch it back this will be on youtube.com slash games done quick uh and okay. one Sorry. more plug before we go to a quick break uh unapologetically black and fast submissions are open uh, in it's a recurring hotfix marathon with Black Runners front and center in a celebration of Black Joy. 
Uh, the first iteration is February 12th and 13th for 12 hours a day. Uh, the schedule is coming on February 1st. Check it out with exclamation point UBAF for the link to the submission form. And uh, make sure to come by to check out the marathon then. So we're going to go to a quick break. And uh, then we'll be back with uh, Valkyria Chronicles 1 by Alexis Goes Moo. Make sure to stay tuned. Welcome back to Aimbot, the strategic shooter night show. I guess is the best way to describe this. So this is Valkyria Chronicles, and I'm really stoked for this run because I, the running theme with Aimbot games is that I've, pl I've played them all, and then about halfway through, the game gets really extremely hard, and I can't beat it. And specifically for this one, there's a mission about... I, 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 Aeon told me about halfway through that I, just hard-stopped me, and I... I cannot wait to see how it gets done. So, Alexis, Aeon, please, uh, please take us through this. All right. Hello. And hey, I'm Aeon Frodo. I'm co-commentating for um, Alexis and for this run. All right. We're gonna start. Uh, three, two, one. So Valkyria Chronicles uh, starts off in the uh, book mode, so we go between both book mode and uh, combat. Yeah, we first off skip cutscenes until we go to the mission. So the first mission is basically a tutorial mission, and it like works out in a way where. Um, we, we use the soldier instead of the main characters. The main characters have like a victory animation when they um, uh, beat an enemy, so you have to um, so you have to use the soldier instead. The soldier's a bit inaccurate compared to the well, the yeah, the town's watchman is a bit inaccurate compared to the main characters, but he's overall faster. We're used to aim and then we can aim. But it's really easy to aim in this game. One little thing is that on the PS4 version, it tends to be like it arcs to the left, so you want to aim like slightly to the right. It's a little more accurate. I actually have to do this a little safe because uh, we need to get A ranks, but we need to get low turn counts. And the one turn for this is just three kills with three actions, so I can't miss. So I'm going to run really close to this unit. Yeah, in, um, I guess in not marathon safe speed runs where, uh, yeah, we have to um, shoot the um, uh, our enemies from far away. So it can be a bit risky, this um, opening mission. Alright, on the chapter 1, the first couple missions are pretty slow because we don't have like menus and it's a lot of just book mode and reading. Alright, so we're going to use Orisha for the yeah. first time, right? So the game doesn't actually tell you that Alicia has grenades. So you only find out in the next mission. So we're actually going to use Alicia here in order to use her grenade because she's the only unit that has a grenade at this point in the game. So uh, what Alexis is going to do is uh, she's going to uh, run up with with um, sorry with Alicia and uh, throw a grenade at the uh, red unit. Uh, Usually enemies are dressed in red, they have a command point, and they give extra, like, 
turns per, um, sorry, they give extra rounds per turn. In order to um, take a turn is, um, you have to use a command point in order to move a unit. Which is why it was a bit strict in that first mission. Yeah, so we, the goal was just to kill that unit, but the mission doesn't end because a tank shows up and we're not going to be able to do anything about this tank for now. So we have to watch an enemy turn. One thing that's unfortunate about this game is it has the slowest of them for like the series. They've added speed up options in the other games, but we have to watch them in this one, but thankfully... Um, speed run, which is really nice considering how long they usually take, especially on the PS4 version or on console versions. On PC, they actually go faster. Yeah. Really so, yeah, in order to complete this mission, we just run behind the tank with Welkin and get to the, um, yeah, just get to the point where we need to go. Yeah, we don't have to um, get Alicia or anyone else there. We just have to get Welkin at the end, so it's a really simple mission. On the PC version, you would run a different angle, but that will kill you because um, anything that isn't like rapid fire, so like a, like a scout or a shock trooper, they shoot like a little faster on console, so you take a lot of damage if you did the PC route for this one. Alright, chapter 2. This is the last tutorial mission. We have to fight the tank. But we need our tank to show up first. So we have to wait till turn three. While we wait, we can actually do something. So in all the routes, we used to like do nothing. But in this route, we actually take out two red units. So as I mentioned, they hold command points and they let the enemy move a bit more. But this allows us to um, have the um, enemy turn go a bit shorter. I'm gonna end turn as soon as we're done instead of using my movement just to take less damage. Cause the town watchman could die doing this. I wanna get Yeah, and close. uh seeing through the town uh seeing through his like death animation it takes a little bit of time, so yeah. try to avoid that. Alright. Now we get end turn and watch the tank. We have and yeah, because we got rid of uh, two of the commanders, it means they only have um, less less um, turns to move, so that means faster yeah, I think turn. it's like 15 seconds if you get it right. But yeah, there's the gates. They're gonna shoot it a bunch, but they'll never be able to destroy it. Oh well. So yeah, that um scout on the hill, if uh, you don't hit them with the first bullet, they'll shoot back like that and it takes some time. It's not a big deal though. And this scout will die like to Alicia pretty soon. Wow, they almost made it. Alright, last turn. We'll shoot the tank, we'll shoot again, but it's not gonna kill us. The only way we can lose the main gate is if we destroy it with our own tank. Hopefully that doesn't happen here. Yeah, it's possible for it to happen. Like, I think it's happened to me in like, one or two runs. And it's it's kind of funny, but at the same time you just lose your run, so... Whoops. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so... The thing about the aiming in this game is even if you have like the crosshairs directly on the enemy, it uh, you can easily miss the enemies. So uh, what they, so what the very first tutorial says that you'll hit somewhere within that um, circle, and it could be anywhere. You could just, yeah, it, here we go. It could just fly off in a completely different direction you don't expect. It, it's a lot of randomness, especially later on in the run. Yeah. But it's good to mention it now, because really uh, it can happen. 
And so we're gonna run over the tree and they're gonna get scared because we have a tank in our garage. Here we go! Alright, so we're gonna try to hit the tank's weak point. If we hit it, it'll do this in two attacks. If not, it'll take a little longer. Or it could just miss. Now! Nice job. Nice, that's very good. So now that Alexis doesn't have to aim for the um, for the Ragnite motor, she just has to like aim for the main body of the tank and it will fall. Yeah, it will just blow up. <laughs> yeah, the main body, it's really rare for Welcome to Miss. Yeah. Oh. Um, so unfortunately in this game, there's also tanks also have tread HP. So sometimes you accidentally hit the um, treads so that's why Alexis aimed a little bit up. Yeah. All right. Next is the first um, HQ fidget of the game, and it's the longest. Because we have to get... Um, basically, you can't exit this until you've endured all of them. So we actually have to go through all three of these. Yeah, so what we need is four... four Three or four male shock troopers, one engineer, Yoko, and or field, and uh, either Marina or Catherine to uh, round out our group. Oh yes, we and either Nancy or um, Wavy as the scout. So yeah, we got our scouts and our shock troopers. I'm gonna see if we get our answer. All right, nice. As long as we get one, we're fine. We got both of them though. Yeah. So the reason why we want male shock troopers is they actually shoot faster from. Um, yeah, they have a faster shooting animation. Uh, female shock troopers shoot from the hip, which uh, takes a bit longer. All right, time to level up. So. Leveling up in this game, we just level all the, like every scout is leveled up if we level up scouts. And then, so it's pretty fast and we're going to level them up in one go so it saves a lot of time. Alright, we're going to do this just to get defense boost because we're forced to Enter here anyway, and we're gonna need defense boost for the next couple missions. Yeah, defense boost is probably one of the most broken orders in the game, and uh, we'll see not this mission, but in the mission afterwards, why it's so broken. Mm -hmm. But getting um, orders is a very important part of the low up route. Yeah, we mostly level up for just getting orders. And I guess potentials for some other routes, but not for this one. And yeah, uh, so normally there's really nothing much we can do in R&D, so we just do a little short trip there, since we have to do something here, because otherwise we, we're not allowed to leave. are frank thankfully not that hard in this one. It's mostly just like the play scouts. But we won't be using scouts actually again yep. until chapter five. So most missions in this game are capture the flag. And since we're really close to the flag in this mission, we're just going to run a shock trooper over. They have less movement than scouts, but they have better defense and do more damage. So anytime it's a short walk, we can use them instead. We should also mention we're running this game in English. Uh, English, uh, yeah, the characters just speak faster. Yeah, that'll start now with um, 
the voice clips when we select the unit. So when I select, I think Kevin, I'm assuming I have. Okay. All right, nice. I'm very disappointed we don't have um, not Sonic in this run. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't show up. <laughs> yeah, so there's um, a shock trooper called Alex, and uh, he's actually voiced <laughs> by Sonic, so it's kind of funny if we get him. Yeah, anyway, so, so go for it. So okay, that's a good grenade throw. Yeah, so, so we don't want to kill some of these enemies because sometimes it takes longer. Uh, and also, with this particular enemy gives you an extra tutorial about the um, command point, which uh, I've already explained. We need to kill the enemy in the, the non-red enemy in the base. Yep. Alright, there's chapter 3. Do I remember the story? Isn't the next mission the one where we take a red tank underwater? Anyway, so on the next page of book mode, we're actually introduced to optional cutscenes, so we just have the menu, oh, you know, not sit through them. <laughs> They're indicated by the star instead of the number. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or the I asterisk. I really don't remember the story of this game very well. But yeah, it's something to keep in mind when um, venuing through book mode. Alright, and this is going to be the only mission we do solo as an engineer. I'm going to use Dallas because he um, has the fastest voice clips. Take down the he talks like as as really, really fast. It's like Watch noticeable, even if not so frames. Yeah, and the main reason why we haven't engineered this mission is because engineers hold three grenades as opposed to uh, one. Uh, the old shot used to be like two scouts, and Alicia is a bit bulkier than the engineer, so uh, yeah, this is so the engineer is a little bit um, paper thin, but they can make it through this mission. Yeah, we're gonna use defense boost for the first time because right away. we're gonna run past a whole bunch of tanks and shot troopers. One. Yeah, and Absolutely, the engineer needs um, mm -hmm. defense boost in order to survive. Okay, so first we're gonna need this it. wall, that's a shortcut. Because of this, is, this is like the main reason we can even use an engineer here. I found one. I found one. And then we're gonna use this shock trooper engineer. here to blow up the Ragnite crate. Leave it to me. <laughs> it's really funny that we can use uh, enemy fire to help one. us. Yeah, that was really fast. Yeah, hurry. Our time is yeah he cooperated quite nicely. Alright. And then we're gonna go over to this space and we're gonna use grenades twice. Yeah, another fortunate thing about engineers too is they hold large ragnites so they can like heal max HP as opposed to other units that they're gonna heal 100 ah. HP. Alright, nice. Cool. And one yeah, more. so. I Next believe we I'll save. eat this other enemy out of the base. And yeah, you're doing a safety save, that's understandable. Because, uh, again, yeah, engineers like can easily die due to the rate of fire here. Right. Yeah. Alicia. <laughs> All right, and Alright, there we go. Yeah, okay, yeah. cool. You got out of this. really scary on this mission with health. Thankfully, no grenades dodge, though. Uh, dodging is basically they duck and they take little to no damage. Um, Basically, if it happens at any point in the run, we have to reload a save. So hopefully we just don't see any dodges tonight. Yeah, um, the uh, enemy aces, which are more powerful enemies that will have names, they, will, they are especially dodgy and we do confront 
two in the run, although we only kill one of them. Yeah. Thankfully there aren't like many required aces. Yeah. Because the run would be a lot more luck than an imp. Anyway, this is the first scout rush mission post, like when we have other units. Because the map is really long and only scouts can do it in one turn. The enemy supply base is through. And also, um, one other thing we should mention is that the main characters are. Well, Welcome gets automatically deployed, but Alicia, um, Rosie, and Largo. They have command points, so it's it's like a really good idea to deploy them, just so you get extra um, turns. And this and this mission this we need order. pretty much all our turns, yeah. unless we get lucky and we can like save a turn. But otherwise, we need all our turns. Moving out. All right, so we're gonna use defense boost basically every rushing mission hmm. in the run. Can't beat the smell of fresh sword. Because we're gonna run past a bunch of shock troopers again and they do a lot of damage Enemy to scouts. Yeah, Enemy these sighted. particular shock troopers just do a lot of damage to Alicia. Even with defense attack. boost up. Yep, so there's two here and then there's gonna be one more before we get to their base. Thankfully, HP isn't as important as last session. Yeah, Alicia's a bit more um, tankier than the engineers, so she can um, take a few hits to um, put it lightly. <laughs> Especially in one of the um, upcoming missions where we're going to see something pretty insane. Anyway, uh, we need to actually use the gr grenade to destroy these crates. And this and pose a problem because now we have no grenades. Uh, unfortunately, um, any uh, unit class other than engineers only have one, one grenade. So uh, in order to take out Mine's the enemies okay. at the base, uh, Alexis is Enemy safety saved here and yeah. we need to pretty much kill every enemy in the base and that will take all our command points to um, get through. If you're Unless you're lucky enough to get um, to beat this enemy in two rounds, this enemy in particular is crouching, so he ends up having more defense than um, your average scout. So he's going to be able to take a few more hits. Yep. So, so it's much safer to have three command here. points to be able to um, be able to take him out. And then the other two units, you must land headshots in order to um, kill them, so and be able to take the base. Yep, and they can dodge even from the side, so yeah, <laughs> I don't blame you. Yeah, it's really silly. Like you'd think it would just be only oh, from like so front, but they can. You have to be behind, and we Enemy can't get behind spotted. these units. Please, Turning please. isn't necessary, but it makes me a little. Better at aiming. Man down. Right. Everybody One careful. more. I'll survive. Now. Oh, yeah, you must land four out of the five headshots. Um, yeah, so <laughs> can be a bit finicky, especially when anywhere within the crosshair, they can aim anywhere. So it's <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, that didn't happen, so... Oh, yeah, and there's, um, oh, Jaeger. Oh. He brought a big tank, but it can't see us, so we just ignore it. <laughs> That's a kind of running theme with this game, is we usually ignore most of the things on the map. So this is the first desert mission. It's not the um, infamous desert mission that pretty much everyone who has played the game knows about. So this mission is pretty straightforward compared to the next mission. <laughs> yeah. Probably like the most straightforward mission in the run. We're just gonna run into a the mine spread out and get the to the end. Region. Squad seven, move out. It's 
So once again, Alicia, and we're going to use Defense Boost. But this time we're going to have a lot of leftover CD. Yeah, this command points aren't issue here. I should also mention that um, we have um, our movement points, which is called like AP, and that's um, that out. decreases every time you move them in the uh, move them per turn. So, so that I'm full excited. bar there is going to be like around three quarters, or is that correct? Three quarters or half? I can't remember exactly, but it decreases every time you move them. So. Uh, that that would end up being uh, a thing we have to deal with. Um, I think in the next mission, yeah, yeah. It might be a thing to keep in mind in the next okay. mission. Yeah, three quarters, yeah. Enemy We're gonna heal spotted. probably twice just for safety. You can actually do this with zero healing, but that's very unlikely. I guess. Yeah, it's insanely risky, <laughs> and also. Uh, yeah, we there is a sandstorm. It helps. It helps reduce visibility. So, uh, yeah, less damage. Moving right. out. Now we have one turn. Since I already healed, we're just gonna do nothing this action. The next action, we're gonna need that sock trooper, and hopefully knock them out of the base. Moving this out. one can sometimes be uncooperative. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes the grenade rolls away in really unfortunate spots. Is he yeah. out? I'm pretty sure even though it looks like he's out, Moving it's out. like just in. I hope so. <laughs> I remember this. It's like if their foot's on the sandbags. Hmm. As long as we don't die, it's good. Dying in this game is kind of bad because um you can't restart missions so like i have to use safety saves i think they added being able to restart missions in the next game right i think that's more of a quality of life thing from the next game onwards all right time for the longest mission in the and game. longest venueing as well mm -hmm. so Alexis is going to do a lot of um, preparation for this upcoming mission. Uh, so a long time ago, Nitrozon came up with um, a leveling route, which is really nice because it means less pop-ups will appear on the screen, and it's just like the it's just the fastest way to uh, to level up uh, your units. <laughs> and so ideally, we want to have lances hit level eight in order to get the demolition boost order, which is the major thing that we need for this upcoming mission. And we just level up every, everything else that we need to for um, coming missions. Yeah, it's the uh, 74833. Right, yeah. I still that number. Yeah, so at, after leveling up Shock Troopers and Snipers twice, uh, we're going to level up just scouts and lances until they get to their desired level, which is 7 and 8. Which should be here. Yeah, we're really... we just have enough EXP for this. Because we get A ranks in every mission, the game gives us a lot of EXP. Yeah, and it's why we need A ranks. And this time we're going to do a lot more in R&D. We're just going to upgrade... Uh, we're just going to upgrade unit rifles, and we're going to upgrade the A device as well, which is Welkin's, the tank that El Welkin is riding. And we're going to upgrade the lances only once, because uh, there's a specific damage that we want to have <laughs> on um, this upcoming mission. Actually, upgraded snipers twice for this. That's like really rare for that to matter, but it might for this run. Yeah, it's something I figured out, didn't I? Or something like that. Yeah. It was like, yeah. And it's for like the very last mission of the game. So we'll get to that when we get to that. 
All right, now we're gonna try to go and equip the tank with more accuracy stuff, just because yeah. mid game has a lot of tank stuff. Yeah, Welkin is kind of known in speedruns for his inaccuracy, so it's pretty useful to upgrade tank's accuracy. Yep, then extra ammunition is very important for the next mission as well. And now we're doing the most infamous mission in the game. So, uh, Chapter 7 features a huge tank called the Batamese, which um, the main villain, Maximilian, is riding in. And uh, it can just fire a It can just do a lot of damage. Oh, you got Yoko in the field? Okay. Cool. That tank is our yeah, target. so we're doing we the free lancer strat. You can do this uh, strat with two lancers, but it's much safer to do it with three lancers. And we also have an engineer deployed as well, and a shock trooper. Yep. Shock trooper will just be for the first turn. Because we have to wait through some turns, we're going to kill all their units so they can't do anything while we wait. Yeah, because waiting for enemy movement just takes a long time. So, yeah, Alexis is just going to clean up here with Kevin. You're doing well. Just keep it up. And yeah, there is some sort of, uh, yeah, we try to clean them up as fast as we can as well. Can <laughs> so uh, we try to take out two at once here and uh, the other two as well, if we're lucky enough. Nice. Good shot. Who are these guys? So yeah, putting, um, putting your shock trooper in scared. precise uh, positions really helps. I have a feeling I'm going to get a dodge. And it also saves command points as well, because you need, like, all the command points for when we can actively damage this tank. We can't actually damage the Batamese now, but we can't. Oh. Wow. <laughs> nice. That <laughs> went, went a lot better than I thought it was going to. Anyway, <laughs> that went yeah. really well, <laughs> yeah. We're going to go and hide our units now, because if they're in range, the tank will shoot them, and it will probably kill them. Yes, right away. Well, it'll at least kill the engineer. Maybe the lancer could live, but it's it's faster to die them anyway. Yeah, you don't want the uh, Batmies to uh, destroy our units because we we need them all. Heed my words and no and unfortunately, Maximilian decides to order, you even though it's completely pointless. Man. So yeah. <laughs> every time he orders, it wastes ten seconds, and it's completely random and out of control. And he could do that for three turns. So. He can waste up to 30 seconds if he chooses to feel like it. Yeah, I think I remember trying the routes in New Game Plus, uh, hiding in a smoke ground, something you'll see later, to skip this part, but um, he just doesn't move and he just won't do anything until you don't use a smoke ground. Wow. Well. Yeah, if um he orders on the final turn, it enemies. can be a bit bad because he he will be able to do more damage to our units. So hopefully he doesn't order on the third turn because it does impact things. But for the first two turns, it's like yeah, that's it's pointless. Yeah. On PC, if he uses an order on the third turn, it's really really scary because the turrets on this are slow and they're barely gonna hit us in PS4, but on PC they start shooting at you like right away, so it's really scary. Alright, last turn. Heed my words and oh, no that's unfortunate. <laughs> Loose your that's pretty unlucky that he ordered all three turns. Alright, so Maximilian just shot a ball, then it lets the radiators be exposed, and now we're gonna begin destroying those. Yeah, so normally what you're expected to do is you're meant to climb up there with a scout and throw a grenade in, and then you have to wait for him to drive to another wall and uh, destroy it. But in this case, we're going to do a little bit of a sequence break here. So. Uh, Alexis is going to destroy all three of them at once. 
and we're gonna start off with a Dem Demo Bruce order on Welcome. And he's going to do a tiny bit of damage, but it, it, it really matters. Entering combat. Uh, on all three of the... Um, oh, what are they called again? Uh, radiators, I think. Radiators, yeah. <laughs> the thing that I shoot... Just watch this. Alright, and now we're going to use Lancers for the first time in the run. And see, like, the turrets couldn't even hit me because they're so slow at this point. No yeah, so... What we have to do in order to get enough damage on these radiators is to you to get a tank slayer to activate. Uh, all three of these uh, lancers have, have that ability. Yep. And they activate if they're running there close no to a tank. tank. It's like a 10% yeah, activation. We need it 9, 10, or 11 times, depending on what kind of luck we get. Yeah, so, so we, we need it a lot. It a <laughs> and so you kind of need to move and in order to get it to activate. But if you can't move, you can just climb back up and down the ladder until it activates. And it can take a while, so uh, hopefully you'll enjoy Largo climbing up and down the ladder, or however long it takes. Yep. One thing I should say is the normal strat in the speedrun for this, or like, not new game category, is like, we have to wait till turn 9, and the AI, after we destroy these um, radiators, after we destroy the second one I think, they spawn a whole bunch of units, and the enemy turns are several minutes each time. So this saves a lot of time over the uh, conventional it not Yoko. Yeah, so now we use uh, Yoko. So the reason why we're not using a uh, field is that he, he order, has two tank, tank slayer abilities. <laughs> and they stack, so we don't want Here them goes. to stack. <laughs> so Yeah, if I were to destroy one of these radiators, it would be very, very I'll bad. Take care of it. Yeah. Alright, two more for the radiators. One order of tank blombe. Here goes. Alright, this has went pretty well. Sometimes it can take, take like two it. minutes for each of these. <laughs> it, it's pretty terrible. It's like the heaviest RNG section of the run. On, and it does cause now. a lot of resets. Alright, done with the first phase. So now we're going to destroy Take all this. the radiators at once. So yeah, go so with a precise down. shot, um, yeah, it, it uh, Welkin oh, can just destroy all three radiators. Nice. Right. So, after you destroy the uh, second radiator, um, radiator if you play the game casually uh Sylvaria shows up and uh if you don't know who she is uh she's a Valkyria um hence the title of the game and she just destroys everyone in and including the t uh, the tank I believe I can't remember at this point in the game but yeah she just rips through everyone so <laughs> uh yeah Sylvaria is a scary factor if you're playing this game um, casually. But now that the rays are destroyed, we can finally take out the body of the tank yeah. with Field. And yes, uh, Field's yeah. tank slay abilities... Uh, I guess Alexis um, isn't really going for the stacking effect unless she, she gets really lucky. So. Some glory. You can only activate the start, so if we don't get it then, we'll just run back and forth. We still could get it if we get it on the last one, though. Yeah, so when, um, B.O. climbs up the ladder, you can- you may be able to hear Sylvario charging up her lance. Yes, she can attack from that far from when she spawns. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, if Field is stuck up there for any reason, he's gonna get annihilated, so... Uh, yeah, better climb down that ladder quickly. <laughs> yeah. 
Thankfully, she will never be able to get her shot off. She actually won't be doing much throughout the entire game. Save me some glory. All right, now we have the armor. That's all right. So after this one, we're gonna actually use our engineer to do um refilling ammunition. Please secure the route. Neutralize that oversized tank. Front lines, return fire. Take out a tank, and I'll be a there hero. We go. It's nice that we ended um, on the ground I'm not because a we need our lancers to be on the ground so we can refill the ammo. Yeah. So yeah, the problem is yeah, lancers have limited ammo as well as snipers, uh, which wouldn't be a thing unless you're playing casually. But yeah, uh, we need an engineer to refill ammo. Check me out. Yeah, it's important because which is you why can't have two units yeah. up on the ladder. Hold on, I'm on my way now. Take out a tank and I'll be a hero. Alrighty, one more Take tank this. there. Check me out. Yeah, it's a shame because it's one of the coolest cutscenes in the game. <laughs> like it just shows off how um, no powerful Sylvaria is. Yeah, it's like that the one where she like deflects a like, bullet. Yeah, she she deflects a mortar, <laughs> which is pretty insane. <laughs> Don't let them go. Chase them down. But it shows off the, that the Valkyria are very powerful beings and you shouldn't mess with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright. All done with Chapter 7. Uh, so Tank Slayer just increases damage against um, tank units, like um, the Batamese right here. So, yeah. So we're in Chapter nine. 8, this is our first uh, two other chapter, so there's two missions in this chapter. And the first mission is a stealth mission of all Alicia. things. <laughs> so Welkin and Alicia get separated from the rest of their uh, troop. And Alicia, uh, with a, I think like something exploded near them. And uh, Alicia unfortunately has a sprained ankle. So Alicia's going to move a bit more slowly than Welkin is. Uh, also, I'm not sure why Welkin suggests this, but she, but he suggests that um, Alicia takes point with a sprained ankle, and I'm like, dude, that's turn, okay? that's not nice. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we're gonna do what he suggests because uh, we need to actually move Alicia to her same position. The smell of fresh soil. Because we do have to get them Enemy both to the point of the map that we, uh, yeah, that, um, to complete the mission. Now. Yep. And we're just going to do the same thing as last um, mission and just kill that unit to make the enemy turns faster. Hmm. Uh, probably also they're a leader unit, so they give extra CP. Alright, then Alicia's going to talk to a tree. Yeah, we kind of need to hug the tree in a certain spot, but also gain her as far um, as possible. Ready to go. So, in this chapter, there's a gimmick where uh, if Welkin and Alicia are near a Punisera plant, uh, Alicia can recover her um, AP. So, the effect that um, the sprained ankle has on uh, Alicia is basically she can't move as much compared to Welkin. Like, Welkin has a full movement bar, Alicia does not. And... Uh, Hilariously, uh, the game does not consider that um, little mountain, little hill in the way of Welkin and Alicia. So yeah. even though they're not quite next to each other, uh, Welkin heals Alicia through um, magic, I suppose. Yeah, you can just talk <laughs> through the wall. All right, we're going to turn and hopefully I'm in the right position. Yeah, 
yeah, it's really important to position Welkin correctly here. Because uh, if he's in the wrong spot, the enemies are going to be in really uh, terrible positions. All right, we're good. As long as uh, that unit shuffles twice. And yeah, this is the part we mentioned earlier where it moves a little slower on PS4. I think this is yeah. like, the only mission that remains as faster on PC. Since we mentioned um, aiming earlier, uh, Ready to go. aiming is way more inaccurate on the PC version, by the way. Like, significantly so. We just have to avoid some searchlights here. Yeah, you don't want to get spotted by a searchlight, otherwise a uh, mortar is fired, and uh, that's not fun to deal with. And this is probably definitely a point where safety saving yep, is going to happen, because <laughs> uh, this particular um, sequence is very scary. So what Alexis is going to do here Very is exciting. run up to the tree, uh, while the searchlight is nowhere near, and uh, grenade the scout, hopefully killing the scout. Okay, good. Uh, so the scout acts yes. like the... So that shock trooper there is an enemy ace, and he is deadly. Uh, so you want to get rid of the enemy ace's eyes, which is that scout there. Moving out. Yeah. Good. Because uh, yeah, scouts yeah. can uh, have... Um, better vision and all that. Yeah. So now we're going to walk and... on this mine. <laughs> yeah, we're going to walk on the mine to um, boost Alicia a bit further. Hopefully not um, fall off the bridge, otherwise it despawns her back to that starting position and that will be unfortunate. Again, we don't want to be spotted by that mortar, otherwise um, the mortar will kill her. <laughs> And uh, both uh, uh, both Welk and Alicia need to be uh, alive in order to complete this mission. Yep. So yeah, the rest of the mission is basically smooth sailing from here. We're just going to walk to the end. My turn, but it okay. will take a while because Alicia is very slow. Enemy, Enemy unit spotted! And yes, we should mention that uh, that mind boost happened while she had a sprained ankle. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty silly. Also, uh, while we're in the grass, the searchlight can't see us, so which is really nice. All right, now we're just going to end turn. And the next turn, we're just going to use two actions with each unit and walk to the end. Yeah, so the big thing about uh, this mission is you do need to complete it by the fourth turn in order to get an A rank. Uh, go. If you complete it in more turns, you won't get the A rank. So, got to complete this this turn to get maximum experience and all that to spend. Yeah. Although we won't be doing an HQ visit for a while, it's still important to get A ranks. Because they make a really big difference. Alright, and yeah, so I don't think we mentioned this, but we got separated from the rest of the squad. And this yeah, is when I'm meeting up with them again in the second part. Yeah, so in the in all the routes we used to um, upgrade scouts here, but it it turns out to be slower. So we're gonna skip upgrading scouts. And 
go right into the mission. So, yeah, Welkin, well, mainly Welkin has to reach the Edelweiss, because uh, for some reason, um, uh, Isara can't do uh, do <laughs> everything in the tank alone. So, uh, yeah, we need him there. We're also going to deploy Rosie and Largo and Nancy, uh, our scout. And we need um, Rosie and Largo for the extra command points. Yeah, sadly, Asara can't just, like, fire the tank twice. So we have to get Welcome Here we go. over. Yeah, they actually explain in Chapter um, goodness, 11 Hostile that Welcome is the one that aimed the tank. <laughs> so it's pretty funny that we can actually blame him for this as well. Considering um, what's going to happen in uh, chapter no, not in the next chapter, but the chapter afterwards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically, there's going to be a, two missions in a row that are very dependent on tank aiming. Protect the tank. All right. Now we're going to get welcome to the tank. Here we go. We used to mine boost here, but we can't really do it in this strand anymore. Yeah. Uh as much as funny as it is, unfortunately, we can't make it um, in two turns, which is why we the mind boosting was there. And also, when um, you um, level up, welcome to uh, Scout Elite, there's um, more um, action points to be able to move welcome. So here we go. Uh, we don't have that because we didn't upgrade before the mission. So we're using me. the tank to block um, the shock trooper shots from Nancy and oh, that's a uh... yeah. Oh no no no, that's not unfortunate. Never mind. Yeah, <laughs> I was thinking, wait, was that unfortunate? No, it wasn't. Never mind. Fire! But yeah, yeah we're we supposed to have two there. more of the shots to destroy the wall, and then uh, we move Nancy, and uh, that definitely deserves a safety save because this is the strat can be a bit finicky. Yep. We might be here for a few tries. So the reason why we have either Wavy or Nancy is because they have an ability called Power Scout. And if uh, five units are aiming at them, it means it can activate, but it can be very finicky whenever it activates. And we need Power Scout in order to take out this uh, Shock Trooper in base. Nice. All right, very good. first try. That yeah. can go in for a while sometimes. Yeah, it can, and also it doesn't help that um, Power Scout is super finicky, so... It, it, this, uh, this mission is surprisingly is a big reset point because of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we just mentioned, we go over the sandbags there because it's a little slower, but it makes the movement less tight because it skips some movement in that. Yeah, it conserves your... Um, it conserves your AP, so you're able to um, have enough act actions to move towards the flag and be able to take the base. Alright, time for chapter 9. Yep, uh, welcome to the only mission in the game where the enemy moves first. Uh, yeah, that's the gimmick. And uh, the other gimmick is we're using a shock trooper to take out this uh, APC instead of, um, yeah, instead of a normal unit. So, yeah, um, there's a lancer there. there and if we, we use like here. a lancer, we Lord could accidentally kill her. So, only shock troopers. <laughs> yeah, yeah we don't want to blow up the tank or the, the APC with the, with the princesses in. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> We have to find a safer method to um, rescue her. Alright, so it's going to vroom for a little bit. And then it's going to park in a really good spot for us to kill it in one turn, actually. Yeah, I think this is like... I think a lot of people know this uh, strategy for the one turn for this particular mission. <laughs> yeah. This is an order! I think like, even the two turns not that bad because it goes Destroying right in the down in the alley priority. and it can't shoot you if you do it in the second turn. Yeah. I can do so that. demo boost and then Found you may be able to see it. I'll slow things move on this version. Like I this hurt is trying to turn to us, but it just is that. too slow on PS4 to hit us then.
So yeah, you had to precisely aim for the back and luckily Alexis was able to take it out. Yeah. That was like last bullet, right? From yeah, Kevin. That was um, really close. We do yeah. have a second try though, so it wouldn't have been that bad if we would have had it live. It's nice to get in one cycle though. We're gonna have another chapter that has two missions, 10, 1, and 10, 2. Yeah, so this is another two part chapter. This uh, two part relies on the A device a lot, uh, especially the first mission where we basically just control the A device for the most part. We yeah. only deploy the extra units in order to have extra command points so we can move the tank a bit more. Yeah, so this mission, the goal is to get the tank to the end goal, and nothing else matters, so we're just gonna Squad move Vulcan forward. Move and it's gonna be like 7 and 8 1, we're gonna kill a bunch of enemies on the way. Entering combat! Hostile sighted! Alright, so first we're gonna kill two scouts. Open fire! Fire! Oh, that's a bit unfortunate. Sometimes they uh sometimes welcome is just a Entering bit too combat. inaccurate <laughs> and doesn't finish them off. Yeah. Now. Luckily we do have extra Open command battle. points, yes, but uh it that's a bit unfortunate. The um so that welcome um Entering missed combat. there. Yeah, thankfully I have I brought all the extra units. Target silent. So we'll have lots of CP just in case Welkin misses. Entering combat. Alright. One more. There's a shock trooper over there. And we'll mortar them off screen. And that is our first turn. So we're going to have to watch some enemy turns here. Um, that's a tank moving in position. It's going to be on a bridge and it's blocking our way. So this turn we're going to have to destroy it. Entering combat. Ah, yeah, but first we have to take out um, some also foot soldiers as well. Also our um, captain, uh, we haven't mentioned her yet, uh, Captain Varad. <laughs> She's actually Welcome's boss. And, uh, but she warns us that they're snipers, but we're in a tank, so I'm pretty sure we're safe. <laughs> Entering combat. Oh, you did take out the shock troopers Enemy last sighted. time. I didn't notice that. Uh, okay. Gotta love nature. For some reason. Oh yeah, we have to just do the blind shots. Which actually went well this time. And yeah, that yeah, the blind tank shots probably one of the hardest shots to hit in this mission. We're doing well. Alright, now I'm gonna move my tank Here we go. all the way forward on this action. Hostile sighted. Yeah. Then oh, we also forward. didn't mention that um, t tanks use two command points instead of one, yeah. so uh, it makes uh, you not be able to use your tanks as often. Although in later Valkyria Chronicle games, they only take up one command point. Right, and yeah, Alexa's just, just right. leaving the tank there because there's like a um, Lancer that maybe wants to fire. No? Good. <laughs> yeah, that position's a little tight if you're like a little more forward or back. Sometimes they'll see you. Entering right, this combat. is the tricky turn. Yeah, because uh, missing the Lancers is... Uh, not desirable at all because uh, Lancers can run up behind the A device and take it out in one go. Oh, that's not good. Oh, he did his best. Here we go. I don't think you mentioned this, but Welkin's also the other antagonist in this game. Yeah. He's just yeah, <laughs> terrible at um. Hitting it to be sometimes. Entering also, combat. yeah, we ran over the um, Lancer in order to 
just get him out of there. And also, unfortunately, that shot hit the treads instead of the main body of the tank. Here we go. I think walking just hit the treads again. Alright, so we gotta make combat. two more CP for this. And we'll see. Alright. Alright, that should be answer. good enough. <laughs> Also needs to move we welcome go. back so the um, the tank doesn't fire back in the enemy phase. I thought she didn't miss the um, lancer there. There's a bit of a new thing for this that's sometimes finicky. Basically, we're in sight lines, but as long as you kill the lancer second. The tank won't be able to see you for some reason. Here we go. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, if you hit the tank first, or rather last, the tank will see you. So as long as Enemy you're doing sighted. the raid order, you don't care about it. Also, yeah, there's tank mines Fire. that reduce your tread HP. You don't want your tread HP to hit zero, otherwise you can't move. Yeah. So, that's not a factor. Anyway, we're right next I'm to the right, but not just One more action after this. I love the ragdoll effects. <laughs> just <laughs> rolling off the cliff. <laughs> Even though it wastes a bit of time, it's just funny. <laughs> Here we go. Alright, a little bit short. Here we go. There we go. Alright, before 10 2, we're gonna do the menu that we would have done in 8 2, combined with the 10 2 menu. It saves like a minute or so. Yeah, and we low up units anyway in this chapter, so it doesn't like, uh, like, you know, yeah. it's why it saves a lot of time, because we do end up leveling units here. Anyway, uh, so we're gonna get our. Um, Scouts to elite and uh, shock troopers and snipers to level nine. So the elite level is like a promotion, and sometimes it grants new things to units. And also, we got a bunch of orders there, some of which are useful. So yeah, once um, scout hits level eleven, we've got our. Um, We've got our Scout Elite. I think we also make it to level 12. Yeah, because yeah, there's another order that we get at level 12, which is actually extremely useful. It's basically a stronger defense boost. And takes up two command points. Oh yeah, and uh, we should have mentioned earlier that orders also take up command points. So, yeah. Yeah. So thankfully you can stack caution and defense boost, so we're going to be using that for missions in mid-game where you take a lot more damage. Yeah, so this mission is also another run killer. So... <laughs> it, it'll happen on the second turn, but uh, what we need to do is um, get Alicia to her uh, designated position and... Sure Hopefully she doesn't die or get hit, gets uh, hit by the tank, because uh, yeah, that'll, that'll be really bad. But most likely she won't get hit. My turn, okay. All right, yeah. So first we're gonna use Alicia. We're just gonna get her in position, Enemy so she has enough movement to win in the second Enemy turn. Sighted. Yeah, this is going to be a two-turn clear. Alright, and we're going to heal for safety. Yeah, the uh, Mortar can do like up to 287 HP worth of damage, so... It's, um... Moving out. For uh, a body shot, I think a headshot just instantly kills. So... Alright, so now we get to see if she gets hit. Because there's a tank across the bridge. Yeah, 
Okay, so this tank we safely ignore, but the tank across the bridge is. Hopefully not going to hit us. We uh, face the Alicia towards the tank so that she's more likely to dodge. Uh, dodging is when she, uh, any unit goes on there. Yeah. Goes down like that. Mm -hmm. And they take reduced damage. Oh yeah, and that's where we're going to fight. We're going to fight a big train, but we can't Underminer hit it. Fire. So we're going to blow up the... Um, tracks instead but first we have to blow up a bridge yeah so uh no, you have to destroy two points in the map which is how Here we, we complete it and one of the points uh is going to be destroyed by a tank outside. from the this bridge to uh that tiny corner there no. wow nice first try that's actually a really hard shot for welcome to hit it's like a, um, oh, around like three pixels. Yeah, it's a really yeah, small thing we're shooting it, 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 Yeah, it's a pretty small uh, place to aim, and the fact that he hit it first try is amazing, because he usually doesn't do that. <laughs> he usually misses most of the time, so that's yeah. very good. I can misses here a lot, and then we have to save our load. We have four shots of that. Yeah. So now we're going to use Caution and, uh, and Defense Boost, and that will make Alicia pretty bulky for the next part. <laughs> yeah. This we're at full order. HP too, so there's not going to be a problem with damage Advance with caution. Parts. Stay sharp. Because he okay. avoided the tanks, he's at full health, and that means well, base, I think we'll lose like half or so. Yeah, she's fine. I mean, she's only getting shot spotted. up a lot, but she'll be okay. Enemy sighted. <laughs> Enemy unit spotted. It's nothing compared to what's going to happen in the next mission. <laughs> Moving out. Yeah, the next mission is like the most deadly fire. Enemy unit game. spotted. Yeah. A little scary. <laughs> Try to stay sharp. Let's all get back home alive. Alright, we're gonna activate this elevator. The next action we're gonna win. There's a teeny bomb and I'm pretty sure Alicia could miss it. I've never Moving seen out. it happen. So yeah, the next the next bomb is very easy to aim and now. yeah. <laughs> Now we got a really long cutscene of the train slowly falling. I think if I remember Yeah, the power of words is very strong in this game. I think like my first run of this, I um got Alicia got headshot. Oh no. Which is really bad because <laughs> Yeah, that that's really bad. <laughs> So yeah, um, after all that, um, Zaka joins our party. He has a smaller tank, and he's also gonna use a. Um, so we're gonna change his um, tank stuff to Gatling guns because he doesn't need a mortar. All right, so we're gonna have to do R and D first. Because we need to get our defense up, and then we're going to do some other stuff just while we're here. Yeah, this is also set up for um, uh, chapter 14. Yeah. Yeah, this is how we get some extra AP on our tank. It'll help in 16. And then we also need more HP for 14. And that was just us switching the same mark on. Because the Gatling gun is just much better. All 
Alright, okay, so this is the chapter te that tells you that um, Welcome is the one that aims the uh, Edelweiss. And also, they we get smoke bombs at this we point in the game, but we're not going to be defenses. using them. We don't need Squad them. Seven, move out. Which is kind of funny, considering um, these guns uh, at the uh, at the beach, they do a lot of damage. But uh, we're able to avoid them with precise movement. <laughs> Yeah. Turn, the next couple okay. missions we just use Alicia. It's probably the most scout rush part of the run. Enemy sighted. So I'm move like here and then I'll avoid that. All troops, advance. Yeah, and sometimes you don't, just don't get shot at all, which is really nice. Alright, we're gonna end turn because we don't have enough AP to win on this turn. So ending turn will give us full AP again. Now we're yeah, gonna so this, um, this turn is the um, this uh, is order. the epitome of what people think uh, that curious speed, Chronicle speedrunning is, and uh, it pretty much represents it quite well, <laughs> it, to a degree. This is an order. Yep, Advanced this is like caution. the most damage. Consider, especially considering we have two orders, we're still gonna have to heal a bunch. Moving out. Yeah, we're just gonna let the game Enemy show its off. <laughs> Enemy unit spotted. Enemy sighted. Enemy unit spotted. Enemy sighted. Keep your cool. Just relax and get it done. There's a mine. Enemy unit spotted. Supplement. Enemy sighted. Maintain your lines. That was a lot of damage. Yeah. Like seven. Might need. Hopefully first aid boost activates because that'll be very nice. My turn, okay? Enemy sighted. And there's those things again, and this time we can't avoid them. Make sure to provide ample support for your foot soldiers. Alright, we're gonna safety save here because we have a tricky grenade shot coming up. Yeah, so we want to get uh, that shock trooper out of the base, and we're going to use our new um, rifle grenade, which we get uh, when we get through, um, which we get when we uh, promote to scout elite. So this is the first use of the uh, grenade. Unfortunately, he stayed out. Sometimes he um, spawns back into the base, which is really unfortunate. And then we're going to use this tank um, to um, take out the final unit, and it's really funny. So yeah, when yeah, so Alexis is going to move Alicia to a precise spot, and yeah, friendly fire is a thing in this game, so we abuse it. <laughs> he does a flip. We get the base. Yeah. I can be a little hard on this person because they fire like the tanks fire a little slower on PS4. On PC it's really funny, they like instantly die. Anyways, uh chapter twelve. This is the map from um chapter two. Yeah, we're going back to um, Welcome and Alicia's hometown, and we're basically going to take it back. Yep, so we're going to use Alicia again. This time she's going to take a lot less damage than homies. 11, but it can still be scary. Oh yeah, we have a new tank pilot. Yeah, we have a new tank driver because uh, Isara died, so uh, it's in peace. This is an order. Brace up and get ready to defend yourself. All right, so we use defense boost and demolition boost. This is an order. Destroying the target is your top priority. 
calling out. Enemy unit spotted. Enemy sighted. Enemy sighted. Leave that one to me. Enemy unit spotted. Out of All right, HP is good, and now we're gonna have to face My turn, unit. okay? And this one we have to. Like, we don't want to kill them, we just want to get them out of the base. Thankfully, yeah, there's... So, um, the enemy ace is a sniper, so... Uh, in Valkyria Chronicles 1, they don't um, counter-attack. I know in 4 they do. Yeah. So... Uh, yeah, nice, nah, he's out of the base, cool. Which, uh... It's really helpful, because, again, um, enemy aces are really dodgy. And this is why uh, Lexus had, put, had ordered uh, Demolition Boost, because it just takes out the gunner there, and we're able to take the base and Man take down. back uh, Welcome to Alicia's hometown. Yeah, but um, if they were to teleport the um, a sniper, it's a little tricky, because you have to like go behind them and not have the shock trooper kill you, and then kill them from behind. So chapter 13 is a pretty interesting chapter. We actually start out not being able to use orders. So one thing that the game doesn't tell you until now is that you can't use orders if uh, Welkin is not deployed on the field. And he can't deploy because there's this, um, I think, carpet bombing of um, yeah, the trenches like and he can't really like missiles. deploy. So yeah. So we, we have to go through this first part of this mission orderless. And uh, this is another big reset point of the run because uh, one, Alicia can easily die, and two, uh, we have to make a very precise grenade shot to um, get these enemies out of the base. Moving out. Yep, so first we're gonna run across the big field. Despite how like dangerous it is, there's Enemy only like one spotted. person shooting us. As soon as you've left the trench, start running. Yeah, they this like take chunk of HP. They does a lot. <laughs> uh, the shock trooper coming out. Uh, you gotta be ready for him. You gotta be ready to shoot him down because uh, he will just like evaporate Alicia's okay. HP. Yeah. We'll see them in a few seconds. Like around this corner. Yeah. Enemy unit spotted. Yeah. Hmm. Man down, everybody be Yeah, we All take right. a little braver here. And then we're gonna use Parker here and then we're gonna end And they're gonna launch a bunch of missiles, but no one's there. <laughs> So yeah, definitely a safety save here because this shot is really precise and Alicia only has one grenade. So gotta be careful where you use it. Moving out. Enemy units spotted. Oh, that was used. So I think the uh, yeah the Ragnar is used to help us aim and then we get our shot. Yeah. Okay, I think yeah they're both out. They should both be out. Ready for an ambush, soldiers. And we got really good health too. Yeah, the sandbags actually protect um, Alicia a little bit there. Alright, we didn't get a dodge either. Because there's two units there and both of those units have the chance to dodge. Because you can't see where the grenade is, but it's to the side of both of them. So at this point in the mission, uh, Silvari is deployed, and you basically got to beat her to uh, the enemy base. So, funnily enough, um, the it's only thing in the enemy priority. base is a tank. And, uh, yeah, right, and okay. if we actually killed more enemies, more enemies would, would be in the base. But because we didn't, 
there's just um, the tank in the base. Enemy units and uh, yes, we're going to destroy a tank with a rifle. <laughs> Thanks to uh, Demo Bruce. Yeah, we get to ignore Solaria again. <laughs> yeah, and ignore Solaria again, yes. Alright, time for another long mission, but first is our last HQ mission of the run. This is the only time we have to upgrade. It's a little bit of a long one now. Oh yeah, I, I'm, I remember, we, we do go R&D as well, right? I'm, I'm blanking yeah, yeah. on this thing, it's been a while. Oh yeah, we go to, um, yeah. So we go to um, Shock Trooper and Sniper Elites, and then we get the um, Penetration Order, which is at level 15 Snipers. So, yeah, we're going to be leveling up Snipers a lot once... Um, that um the lead to reach for both classes yep and penetration's like the last really useful order in the run yeah I mean, so yeah it's a particularly powerful order where we just ignore defense quick R&D trip. Oh yeah, we blow up um, shock troopers, that's right. We blow up the, um, yeah, the machine gun. So, one thing about the machine guns in this game is that we want to upgrade the clip size. We actually do more damage because there's more bullets in this clip size compared to firepower boost. Uh, I think we get to 30 at this yeah. point. And um, we only and the five power boost only has twenty shots. And the more um, the more bullets you have, the more damage you do. So uh, I guess to catch people up on the plot, uh, Alicia's a Valkyria. Um, spoilers. <laughs> yeah, she's actually a Valkyria. Um, so it was, I think it was like kind of hinted in um, the plot that um, she could open the door in the ruins in Chapter 7. And uh, yeah, she's now deployed out on the field as a Valkyria. Um, she had to be put um, close to death and put the um, spear and the shield near her, um, the Valkyria relics. And it activates her Valkyria powers. So yeah, she destroys everything. We're not controlling her right now, which is unfortunate because um, we would we would abuse that. <laughs> yeah. Instead, I'm just gonna spin the camera. Yeah. Also, the sound effects are different compared to uh, PC and console as well. Uh, yeah, you can have a bathroom break during this. <laughs> Alright, in this turn, so it's going to be set up for the next turn. Because this one takes two turns. Mm hmm. First we move Vargo and then we move our scouts. Just watch this. I totally got it. Oh 
Oh, I hope Nancy says the quote later on. Oh my god. Yeah. I just remembered. Have, have a chance in the next turn. I hope she says it. In, in this mission, I, I really hope she says it. Anyway, um... Try to attack Alicia. It won't work. <laughs> My favorite thing, by the way, is that if you um do nothing in this mission, Under Alicia will fire. just endlessly kill the units, and they'll keep bringing um, reinforcements, and it just goes on though forever. You automatically gain the over if you take more than twenty turns though. Again, the reason why we upgraded the Edelweiss is so that uh, Welcome can survive that previous turn. Sadly, I don't get to move the camera much with this one. She, like, yeah, the second climbed. turn goes a lot faster than the first one. Alright. Time for some more setup. Been waiting here. We're gonna ambush their tanks that are planning on ambushing us, so it's important to get Largo in position before they spawn. Otherwise, we'll spawn on top of a bunch of units. Yeah, this mission is really nasty casually. Like, people have been uh, taken order. surprised by those tanks and their. Um... Destroying the target is your top yeah. priority. <laughs> it, it's not good. Alright, I'm gonna use some orders because. They're gonna spawn this some enemy order. boss tanks, and killing with them with a scout takes a lot of orders. Just, um, leave it to me. Yeah, so the the moment was, uh, sorry, the moment we uh, captured the space, uh, Alicia, Alicia in Valkyria form goes back to normal, and uh, she collapses. So, uh, no more Alicia for the rest of this mission. Also, we can't skip this cutscene, in case yeah. it wasn't obvious. That shield looks really small. We're gonna this thing. Alright, hopefully Nancy says her thing here. What just happened? I'm hoping. <laughs> yeah, just, I did get um, it in practice, it although that was 8 too. The defense is starting to weaken. Oh no, she isn't saying it. Unfortunate. Yeah, she Grass. she says yay, happy grass, and it's hilarious. <laughs> I totally got it. Here I go. But yeah, we, we literally took out another tank with a rifle. No biggie. And then we're gonna go back and use lancers. We haven't used them in a really long time. Been waiting here. Yeah, hope oh, we wow. get a bit lucky. Nice oh wow, you, you did! Wow, that's nice. <laughs> Tank Slayer makes this last yeah. one less turn. That's very fortunate. Also, my just cat just this. uh arrived. No wow, <laughs> yeah. my cat is in the room. So hello. Hello. Yeah. You wanna watch the speed run? Hey 
Anyway, a low plot happens here. Uh, because, uh, yeah, we have no idea who shot Alicia. It turned out to be a friendly, from a friendly rifle, and it turned out uh, Faldio did it. Um, I, we barely mentioned him, and uh, he, he doesn't have much to do in the speed run. <laughs> Yeah, because he's like a cutscene only character. Yeah. <laughs> but basically, he's like Welkin's friend from university. And, uh, they get in a tiff. Um, uh, Val Faldio and him get into trouble, although Welkin in less trouble than Faldio because he didn't shoot someone. And this mission here is, I guess, has, um,. My contribution to the speed run, which is kind of funny. So, <laughs> and our first use of um, smoke Squad bombs seven, as well. Entering combat. Excuse me. All right, so yeah, cool. we want a smoke bomb just so Alicia has some cover. My turn, okay. That way we don't have to use any orders on this turn. Yeah, and we move um, Alicia. Uh, sorry, and we move the um, Edwise into that position in order for the. Uh, Enemy sighted. Uh, so in order for the shock trip of the next turn um, to not uh, move so much, which uh, saves like ten me? seconds. And I accidentally discovered that, which was yep. kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna just activate three switches. The first one's easy because it's real close, but the next two are in a bit of a dangerous spot. So yeah, that shock tube is not gonna move. <laughs> so I'm guessing like this is safety this just is to order. put an order up. You can get through here without any orders, if but it's uh... Stay sharp. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm actually going to use both orders this time because this uh, every single practice run I've done, I've gotten yourself. really, really bad luck on the upcoming part. Like, right, okay. <laughs> My turn, okay. Like, I don't know why, they just really, really want to do a lot of damage recently. Yeah, so another feature of the game is that uh, uh, bullets coming from high can do more damage because of um, gravity, I believe. Yep, we park Alicia there to skip a cutscene that teaches us. Yeah, that's problems. important too, um, skipping that cutscene because we get told about the enemies up there on the ladders, so <laughs> it's just like, yeah, we're not interested in that. Yeah, because I use both orders, I'm going to take like no damage. Yeah. Uh, Alicia also now has the, um, I guess her hidden really powerful potential, Valkyria, in order to tank some hits as well. But um, having both those orbs up, that or that um, ability is not necessary. Yeah, and that will be our last time using Alicia for the run and scouts in general. Yeah, so the next mission, we actually take out Savaria. Um, uh, she's not going to go in Valkyria form, because... Uh, <laughs> yeah, she was um, beaten by um, Alicia earlier in Valkyria form, so now she's going... Um, I guess, um, just in her um, normal form. But she has a pretty deadly um, gun that pretty much has a range of a sniper and shoots like a machine gun. So, <laughs> yeah, go. you really don't want to mess with it. Anyway, so, uh, so, um, Alexis is going to throw a smoke bomb, and then we're going to use, uh, Zaka in order Wait. to, uh, take out Savaria. Normally, uh, in a casual playthrough, you do a, um, sniper relay between two snipers. Why? <laughs> That was nice damage for their son. It skips a text box if you don't do too much on the first one. Yeah, you can take her out in one round, um, but it's um, 
not likely to happen unless you have attack boost on. Yeah, Although two rounds is pretty good. Same if you get in two rounds. Yeah. And yeah, the reason we were running back and forth out of the smoke is we have to refresh her vision because she dodges anything from the front or sides. But using smoke means she can't do that because otherwise you have to um either use the sniper or run all the way behind her. Yeah. That takes a really long time. That's a really complicated math with like a lot going on, but we just kind of ignore it. Mm-hmm. So this mission is an auto scroller. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there's not much we can do to make it faster apart from not deploying uh, Alicia. So uh, Alicia makes this mission more consistent, but not deploying her uh, wastes less time. So, well, we, yeah, well, deploying her wastes more time. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, on average, we anyway, depending on how Vulcan's feeling today. Yeah, <laughs> so this is another time where we're relying on Welkin's um, sketchy accuracy in order to in order to complete the mission. <laughs> and yeah, so casually, uh, there's no base camps in this mission. So unfortunately, uh, if any of you units uh, that do not are uh, not story related characters, if they uh, fall here, they actually die. It, like it's a permadeath thing. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, Why is that it's pretty bad. But because we only have main characters here, they they don't die. They just retreat. Even though Zaka was just run over by a giant battleship called the Marmota, and that's like Maximilian's secret weapon. Entering combat. And he's I'm going to use that to um, charge into the capital city of Galia to, um, yeah, just to um, get its, uh, to mount its secret weapon. Alright, we got the easy one. Yeah, the next one's the hard one. Hello, kitty. Entering combat! Alright, we'll pet yeah. the cat while we're in this auto scroller. Cause um, she's right next to me. It's not jumping on my lap though. Fire! Alright, got in two dries. And yeah, Entering we're gonna hide combat. in the smoke ground. Just so no one can attack us. Now! In this case, to avoid being attacked. Every other time is just to make it a little faster, but yeah, yeah that uh, this are, can be dangerous. Yeah, I was going to mention the Lancer as well. And also yeah, and that soldier points. too is extremely indecisive on what to do because he can't really do anything with the Shock Trooper one if you don't smoke around, so he just ends up wasting a lot of time. And yeah, every turn we're gonna bounce the Marmota slowly move forward. Entering combat. So they trying to block the tank uh, with some barricades. We'll just be able to destroy them with the tank. It's a little faster than using a mortar. Yeah, it's mainly because you can just shoot faster with the, uh, um, the tank shell instead of the mortar. One 
one thing I can mention that's kind of funny, and I just remembered it, is um, there's a all-female engineers route for this game, and the strat for this minefield in that is you get a potential called Invincible, and you just can run across the whole field as a unit. It's really funny looking. <laughs> Sadly, we don't get to use engineers for the rest of the run in this one. Yeah, engineers are um, not really uh, that strong of a class, so they they kind of get shelved. Entering combat. Underminer fire. Enemy sighted. They are more useful in later games, so. Now. Gotta love nature. <laughs> Entering combat. This should be like the final smoke bomb. Yep. Right? Yeah, the next turn we'll be able to use the um there's a little like wall. Gotta use that to block the um shock trooper. Yeah, the Marmota just runs over its base because it was I mean, basically we were trying to direct the Marmota in the right direction to a big landmine field. So we gotta go and block its path one more time. Here we go. <sighs> gotta love nature. nature. Yeah. Also, at this point, um. The Galian army has been like taken no. out by um, Silvaria, the, the main enemy. army. So Did there's only the militia left. Oh yeah, that's like the post fifteen two cutscene. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. I have not seen that in a while. Yeah, probably should mention that um, Silvaria like nukes the main army. Like it's it looks like a nuclear explosion. It's it's kind of nutty. position correctly because the shock trooper did not see us. And now we just end turn until the Marmona gets to the end. Yeah, so it's just like a chill waiting game until the game is done. Or oh, well, the game says you win. Yeah, so it's not this turn but like the next one. See the Marmota has like a face painted on it. It's always really silly to me. I think the idea of it is just supposed to be intimidating. Considering how big it is compared to um our our tank. <laughs> Like the Marmoda is literally like a giant tank, but it's it's technically a battleship. I don't know why, but the front of it always makes me think of it as a train. The next mission yes. is a lot faster. Yeah, the next uh, three missions are 
significantly faster than this one. <laughs> this for a while but this is the same map of chapter four it was always hard for me to tell because it's set day instead of night yeah and there's uh we start in a different spot too like a completely different spot on the map <laughs> that you don't really go to <laughs> but yeah so there's a lot of um so so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna um use uh Penetration and demo brace orders on the shock trip on the shock trip of a choice, which is probably Kevin in this case. And uh, also, Jaeger says that his tank is basically invincible, but we're gonna prove that wrong very soon. <laughs> it's really funny, but yeah, order. yeah, this it's is one of the reasons Kevin is really good. We use it a lot in late game. Protection is weakened. You're gonna be using those orders a lot. Penetration is really useful in late game. Uh, roger that. I see an enemy. I see an enemy. Enemy unit sighted at 10 o'clock. Yeah, there's no more upgrades in the run unless I wanna get some. I, uh, I no, there there is, right? We get to we we max Found out our chip size. Found an enemy. The clip size. Right? Yeah, I could do the T-Mag 10 strat. It's been working well. I can do that. Oh, okay. It's, it's a different strat. There's a new strat. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so it takes like two rounds of um, the uh, clip the clip to take out the um, to take out the uh, lupus armor, and then we <laughs> use the final one to take out the uh, body of the tank. Uh, the, it's a little bit unfortunate you, we hit the treads, but it's okay. We're able to take out the body. Yep. Just need to aim a bit higher. And yes, Kevin is the best character. We could do something really cool next mission, but it's uh, not safe for a no reset run. So we'll do right, the it's the one turn, right? On the yeah, on eighteen one. Is that what you're thinking of? Yep. Yeah, Kevin's. Well, you don't j only need Kevin, but Kevin's usually the one for it, just because he's in like a good menu spot. Also, a lot of plot happens in these two pages. Like basically, this this whole page, these two pages are just plot. Yeah, Maximilian I'm... gets to the capital anyway, and he gets the big super weapon. So this mission's gonna be to take it out. Yeah. Is the Marmota sink it at all costs? Squad seven, move out. So what we have to do on the first turn is to um, shoot the plating with um, the tank. Otherwise, uh, our units cannot get up on the uh, ledge there. Yep, that's going to be what we do on uh, turn one. So we do use Welkin one combat. more time, but he is. Never miss just I love before. nature. Now! And we do need to use a smoke bomb in order to uh, yes. not. Uh, in order for Welcome not to get shot from behind. Uh, so, what, so, one of the biggest reasons why we initially thought that the uh, PC version was the fastest version is because of this upcoming enemy turn that um, it takes a while for it to go through. And it. Um, yeah, and we fought for the longest time that the PC version was the fastest version because yeah, of that. Yeah, going to be a lot of stuff playing. The current like record route does this in one turn, but that is very un unlikely to happen in a marathon setting. 
So right. lots of suffering. And uh, yeah, so the big thing is. Oh, sorry. What am I going on about? <laughs> um, yeah. So the big thing is you don't want the Ada Whites to get um, taken out here. Otherwise, you have to like sit through the first turn again, and it's very painful. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure we'll be fine. I've heard some people say this, they can see you, but I've never seen it myself in this chapter. Because, like, there's a Lancer that gets really close to the base. If he just went a little bit more forward, we would lose. Or use the definitely... extra command point that's left over. He would have been able to make it to the base, but he, he, for some reason he's not commanded to move again. Right. But yeah, so the PS4 version has the uh, fastest loads, which is kind of weird because Normally, um, normally in the speed games, PC is version order. is the um, fastest, but Destroying in this case, PS4 priority. is, and I think because yeah. it's a better port compared to the PC, like the PC port of this particular yeah, game has a lot of issues. It's kind of odd sometimes. Aim for where yeah. Remember, we used the same order as we used last time because we have to do a lot of damage to destroy the um. Uh, roger units. that. Yeah, so we had to take out two heat sinks and the land. And yeah, we need a lot of damage for that. So penetration and demolition boost we should be able to um, tear through that. I can do that. Found an enemy. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah. So, um, Alexis was trying to take out both the heat sinks in one turn, but unfortunately, it, it doesn't work. Yeah. It didn't work that time. Roger that. We actually got two metal heads. Oh no, we're not at the right point. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty unfortunate. But uh, Metalhead um, it increases Kevin's damage, so he's able to, he would be able to take out the Lance in two shots if... Um, yeah. Orders, but that's really unfortunate. <laughs> we still could get it, but... I can do that. It, it's very I'm unlikely. Playing. Yeah, so all the shots hit the lance. Hit, hit, hit. I can do that. Alright, one more turn for this. And then we're on to the last mission. I can do that. So guess what? We're finally using snipers, by the way. <laughs> yeah, there, yeah, there's a sniper class in this game. They're a thing, and they're going to finally be used. Uh, also, Maximilian has made himself an artificial Valkyria. Uh, hence why um, he's going to look very, um, yeah, very super Spanish and all that. But yeah, we, we have to take out the towers that... Um, surround uh, the map and um, yeah this we we need the the sniper in order to take out one of one of them because they have the range in order to be able to operation. let's end this war squad seven I believe we have Catherine this time and uh, yeah she has yeah. still has penetration yeah she is yeah Catherine the Marina works here which is our desired snipers I think and the yeah, they have the penetration ability. Alright, 
So once again, we're going to use penetration, but no demo boost this time, because we're not shooting a tank. This is an order. Yeah, we're shooting a man pretending to be a Valkyria. Yeah, so we have three towers, and we're going to have to destroy them before we can Engaging shoot Max. The enemy. Yeah, so, um, uh, Salas, I can't pronounce his name, <laughs> but he's going to help out here <laughs> <I'm just warming laughs> up. with um, just taking up out uh, Maximilian. We have to wait until he um, uh, stops. Um, he, he's shooting is not as lethal. Uh, he takes like ten shots, so. But we're able to move within like um, five shots, I think. Or yeah, yeah. So, so Salius is going to help Kevin here. Your orders, sir. And now we're going to finally use our sniper to take out the final tower. Uh, if this mission goes uh, longer than one turn, the um, the towers actually uh, regenerate their HP, and th it's different what towers are active. So it's very annoying. Oh, nice! That's going to be a one shot on the tower. Oh, oh no! <laughs> and sometimes. Snipers miss because, um, yep. <laughs> that's oh, that's save. sad. But luckily, you, you safety saved, so not too much of a big deal. And we're gonna save again. Snipers can be pretty uncooperative. We only need one more, though. If we would have um, landed that shot with penetration, we would have done this in one cycle. Yeah, the, the tower will be taken out in one hit if, um, yeah, if that uh, penetrator shot hit. Which is super unfortunate. Yes, I know. Sorry, my cat is probably really hungry and I need to feed her soon. Leave it to me. Don't worry, the run's going to be over soon. We'll be there soon. <laughs> So we're going to use Zaka here. Oh wow, you're driving up really close to him. <laughs> yeah. And we're going to use the um, smaller Gatling gun to um, lower his HP. Um, not to the point where, where we trigger his second phase. Because if we just trigger his second phase, he'll be he teleports to the end of the map. And uh, yeah, want. it's it's impossible to hit him with all our units. And now we use all units attack, which is our final order. And we're going to use our, um, one of the shock, shock troopers here. We're gonna, yeah, uh, this is the, uh, D-Mag 10 strat, so we're just gonna use... Leave it to me. Yeah, it's exactly Pines, right, yeah. Assuming Max dies, this will be time. With the main machine gun, and time. Oh, I guess you're supposed to call time, but yeah. Whoops. <laughs> yeah. Alright. But yeah, that's time. Valkyria Chronicles 1. Speedrun. Alright. 156 27. That was really good. Thanks. That was fun. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah really good run. Uh, considering how Welk Incorporated and everything, that's also really nice. And with all the safety saves as well. I can't believe that final shot and sniper Squad missed. <laughs> I'm so sad that missed. <laughs> I think that would have been the first time I one cycled it with penetration. Because I usually don't upgrade the sniper twice. Right, yeah, that's a, that's a my strategy thing. So, yeah, that made me a bit sad. <laughs> well, uh... Are there places people can go to learn uh, to speedrun this game? Uh, yes, there is the Valkyria Chronicles Discord. Uh, there's um, all the games uh, um, there. So if you want to learn either Valkyria this game or um, or any of the other Valkyria Chronicles games, I think we have like a speedrun stuff information for all of them. So it's highly uh, recommended if you're interested in Valkyrie's Chronicle Speedrun that you join. 
and yeah, we'll be able to. We're happy to help anyone that wants to um, um, have any advice to um, speed run any of the games in the series. Yeah. Awesome. Well, again, thank you so much for coming on and showing us that. I I really liked it. I really like these strategic types of uh, runs because they you know get to show a little bit more than just fast reflexes and twitch aiming you know it's all the planning and all the all the meticulous stuff that goes into it makes it really cool but uh yeah i've got a couple announcements before we end out the night um like i said earlier uh unapologetically black and fast is coming soon uh submissions are actually closed for that i misspoke earlier uh it's a new recurring marathon where we put uh black runners front and center in a celebration of black joy First iteration is February 12th and 13th. Uh, exclamation point UBAF in chat for more information. And the schedule will be coming out February 1st. Um, just to let people know, for the month of January, all of the revenue that GDQ raises from subscriptions and bits will be going to the Prevent Cancer Foundation. Uh, we ended GDQ at 3.4 million, and that was really cool because I was in the studio uh, helping out with that. So maybe we can hit 3.5 by the end of the month. That would be really awesome. Uh, G uh, <coughs> excuse me. Alongside all the shows that we have uh, starting most nights at 7 p.m. Eastern uh, every single night, we've got multiple week-long events with Frost and Flame Fatales, uh, women-led events twice a year supporting other charities. And if you have any ideas for your own show or one-off events. Uh, like I personally submitted this show and I've submitted uh, one and done a which ran in December. Uh, go to gamesnotquick.com slash hotfix to submit your idea. Love to, you know, I'm, they would love to hear from you. Um, I definitely like seeing new shows. So if you've got an idea, check it out and uh, submit it up. That's it for tonight. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern another show so come back check us out then we'll see you later <laughs>